This is the draft day Browns fans were waiting for. Sonny, I hope you're listening. You run this team. You're the general manager. You can fix it. Hey, Tom. Hey, Sonny. Sonny. Every year, someone comes out of this looking like a donkey. Can you hear me? Yeah. Good, because tomorrow I got a feeling it could be you if you don't make this deal. Let's talk about the draft. I need you to make a splash, Sonny. If you can't do it, then I have to do it. Just to be clear here, you're threatening to fire me, right? Your job is to coach a team I give you. They do it different in Dallas? Yeah, they do. They win. A lot. How is it that the ultimate prize in the most macho sport ever invented is a piece of jewelry? We talk football? We can always talk football. I just want the team that I want. One time. You see things other people don't see. Rewind that back to the start of the play. That's one of the things I love about you. All that matters is what you think. Write your own story, Sonny. I want this team's future back. Let's get busy. Draft day. History in the making. 224 young men are about to become players in the National Football League. Bo Callahan, he's the surefire slam dunk number one pick. Trade me. I'm going to do what's best for the team. This is the draft analysis we've all been working on for the last two months. Just made a trade with the Seahawks. Sonny, that's our future. You sold a cow for magic beans. How does the entire world already know about this, Mom? Because I just tweeted it. You're on Twitter? You're not. I love having the number one pick. <laughs> I hope that you would. The Cleveland Browns are now on the clock. It's go time, boss. You got row. Who are you going to take? What's happening? Who are you picking? You son of a... I need five minutes, and then you can fire me. I got Tom Michaels on the line. Sonny, are we trading six? I quit, Sonny. Don't quit. See what I do from here. You're going to like this. The football world is in shock, wondering what exactly the Cleveland Browns' Sonny Weaver Jr. is cooking up here. You're not going to believe what's happening. You make this deal right now, say it with me. An absolute stutter. Okay, screw it. No more offer. Oh, 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 oh. You're out of your mind. Yeah, I am. Haven't I proved that already? All right, let's get started. Gogs, go ahead. <laughs> Do it, Gogs. Well, movie the podcast. That's right, movie the podcast. It Slower. The final week. <laughs> yeah, do the Kevin Terry Gross. Cost- <laughs> the final week of Kevin Cost November. And uh, we're here good. with the pretty good. whole cast of movie the podcast. We have TJ and, and Sean and Alec and, of course, me, Gogs. And we're going to talk about <laughs> Ivan Reichman's seminal draft day movie draft day yeah when his name popped Starring up at Kevin the end Costner. it was like ivan reichman yeah That's right. they dragged about, him out of his crypt so weird. movie about the cleveland browns doing the unthinkable oh wait the very thinkable and just ruining their team for years and years to come <laughs> yeah, yeah. like they went this movie came out this movie was a 2014 draft right they went this they, off the hype I felt what bad season? for TJ immediately because the like the second line of the movie is them dunking on the Redskins at yeah, the, time, yeah. the time they were the Redskins for the RG Griffin trade. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They did the uh, like the year if this was the 2015 season that would have been after this draft. They went three and thirteen. It was the Manziel year, wasn't it? It was the Johnny Manziel year, I think. If it's the twenty, if the twenty fourteen draft would have been the twenty fifteen season, if I'm doing I, that right, I, I, I'm going to get a little ahead of myself, but like this movie needed one of those like Animal House singers, <laughs> like where they they play it before the credits, where it's like, yeah, and and the team that year went to, oh. <laughs> you know, they, they won and two Vontaine games. Mack that, died in <laughs> Vietnam. <laughs> no, yeah, he wasn't wounded by anything. his own troops. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, oh yeah, so we watched draft day. Uh, you know, ca- uh, and I, I think that I think that you all will be shocked at at a lot of things about draft day. I know I I'm am. shocked. I you know, know I'm the, fucking the, perplexed. Uh, the, this was a blacklist script. I found out. No shit, really? Yeah, yeah. So what does that mean? It means it's like the there's a like what they would consider like a book of the best un uh, unused scripts in Hollywood. They call it the blacklist that like goes around studios, and this was one of them. Was it always about the Browns, or was it just about any sort of like, that? I don't NFL know. I, front office. I would assume it was probably about the Browns because it has to be kind of like a losers team and a team that would allow you to make them look not the best. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know. But who knows? Like they, the access they got to this footage, which we'll get into later about some of the stuff they had to softball in there. I think to get a lot of the rights for this. Yeah, but 
Anyway. Yeah, the fact that they had all those lines about concussions not affecting players in the long term. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tell the truth. They, they yeah, got Will Smith the, truth. Trump in this the fact that that guy doesn't actually have an accent in real life still cracks me the fuck up. He's a up. very oh, slight accent, true? but he, he doesn't have like an air of their accent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah no. no he, <laughs> it's so funny to me. Jamaica uh, got a bobsled team. <laughs> you are Brad <laughs> <laughs> oh man all right uh what did y'all watch this week i'm gonna start with gogs because i know he watched like a billion movies out of character watched, for him i watched seven things holy Jesus shit fucking cr- well at least one of those is tabled. well one of these two, is, two is tabled I, I two believe. are tabled and i can i can quickly talk through three of them i watched the unofficial paul verhoeven trilogy <laughs> of robocop total recall and starship troopers uh hell yeah all, all still slap. Total the- Recall. I, I'm just, I'm just gonna put in a little plug for Total Recall because I don't think I give it as much respect little, as it's due. A little plug for Total Recall. <laughs> uh, that movie, little film Total Recall. That that movie is uh, that movie is great. Like that movie is really a lot of fun, and it's an interesting Arnold Schwarzenegger because he's sort of playing like the fish it's, out of water. Schwarzenegger is fun. It's it's a part written for a much mousier man than Arnold yeah. Schwarzenegger. Uh, Gogs, have you ever seen Arnold Schwarzenegger's commentary on that movie? It's no. so hysterical. It's so fucking funny because he's talking like he's the he's like this is where I was dressed up like a nerd. I am a this construction is- man in this scene, and fucking Verhoeven's <laughs> talking all these deep themes and shit. He's like over here, I pick up a rock. <laughs> <laughs> He's going so, to his. Gym. I love that Arnold's going to like have like a like a jackhammer conversation with like not Paulie from Rocky. Like it's <laughs> uh, that that movie is fucking oh, a ton of fun. I love, and it, it should have been my pick for October Noir. But one, the, one of the uh, one of the I, Sean, would you agree? Uh, top top tier uh, Philip K. Dick uh, movies. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Because most probably of the right behind Blade Runner. Or, well, Scanner Darkly is the best one, I think. Yeah, Scanner Darkly is the best one. Yeah. Mm. It always Scanner makes me really see Total Recall. I think of that fucking meme. I know we've both shared it a bunch of times where it's like all of Philip K. Dick's books have titles like, let's see what's going do- on down at the Brain Factory, but the movies are all called Cortical Impasse or some shit. <laughs> What was Total Recall's actual title? Uh, and we can remember it you. for you wholesale. wholesale. Which is a great title. Yeah. A little word. I mean, that's kind of his bit. I like, you know, I, it, sign me up for Recall. That place sounds like a lot of fun. Um, so I'm not seeing the ne- downside. Yeah, right? Um, oh, yeah. So let's, let's whip through everything else I watched before we get to the table thing. I watched uh, The Last Day on Mars. I think I mentioned I was watching that last week. It's fine. It just turns into that movie Life with um, Life uh, like The Venom Life prequel. okay. Say it again, yeah, Sean? Venom. The Venom prequel? Yeah, exactly. Like, this is just... It's fine. It's Lee F. Schreiber trying something. It's it's fine. It'd be better if it was less of a monster movie and more of a, like uh like there's like like space disaster movies. It's like my critique of Sunshine. Like Sunshine's such a good movie until it's a monster movie. Yeah, I feel like, the same about the descent. Yeah, like until like when it's just like you against the environment, it's so yeah. much more entertaining that, than you against a monster. Enough. Yeah, like that's existentially t- that, and that's it's, like indiscriminate and it's just yeah. like uh-oh. Yeah, it's it's like almost like without the pun, cosmic horror. It's like a universe that doesn't care about you. The monster is the hat on a hat, right? <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, I saw that. Not bad, but I wouldn't recommend it. I saw Vivarium, which I actually liked quite a bit. Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's it. That's an interest. That's an interesting fucking film. I really it was not what I, it was not actually at all what I expected it to be. It's a I little on the it, nose with its metaphor, mm-hmm. but I wonder if it affected you different because you actually have kids. Those, those oh, there's parts of it where I'm like, yeah, yeah, shut up, just shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> and I like I was watching it, and like the kids start screaming, and I was like, oh, this is gonna trigger Liz, like she's gonna get set off. I gotta hit mute. Um, that's one of those movies where you wonder if the person who wrote the script is okay. Yeah, right. Yeah. The way <laughs> they, like, more of us like just the person's kids, okay. The way um, they pitched up that kid's voice is so fucking like unsettling. Like the, oh, like, yeah. that weird like overtone that they used on his voice. The it's also strange. weird for Jesse Eisenberg to have to play like a man. Yeah, you know what I mean, not yeah. some like just old boy. No, yeah, he was like, and I'm you know I'm I'm not the biggest fan of him, but he was really good in it. Imogene Poots was really good in it. Like yeah, for being like a basically a two person 
cast. Like, I mean, they, they, they fucking have, nailed it. Those two have good chemistry because they have great chemistry. They were the art of self defense. Art of self defense yeah. too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um. So like that, and I watched a uh, Pusher with uh, yeah, Mads good. Mikkelsen. That is a good. And one. that's like you know like Safety Brothers like street level crime. I know it's it's Nicholas Wingding Refn, but like it's. <laughs> Like, it's like his, it's like his second movie. Is um, that like it was super? I can see why people were like, "This guy's like I, talented." I, I, you can I, see. I know we talked about this before. I highly recommend that you watch at least watch Pusher Two. Uh, there's three of them. The third one's okay, but the second one's really good. The second one is all about Mads Mikkelsen. Like, yeah, because I was surprised. Like, spoiler alert for Pusher. I don't. Know, when did he come out? Ninety something. Yeah, early two thousands. Yeah. Like, I was surprised at how been... checked out he was early in the movie. And yeah, he's, like he's like barely in it. He's a side yeah. character. Yeah. But like it's like very like you can see the architecture for like Drive and like Only God Forgives and like all that Which shit. Which is still his best movie, I think. I, I gotta rewatch Only God Forgives, disagree. I guess. I wouldn't disagree with that. Because that movie made me super uncomfortable. Have you um, ever did you ever watch did you ever watch uh Too Old to Die Young? Yeah. I would I would love to know your thoughts on that show. Oh uh, it's I, a show? Yeah, it's on uh, Amazon Prime. It, it's a yeah, show it's, he did. It's Nicholas Winding Refn and Ed Burbaker. Yeah. Oh. The, the if you do watch it, I would suggest watching it like one episode and then come back to it in a couple days. Like, don't binge watch it because it's not that kind of show. Yeah, okay. I agree with Sean. They, it's actually a show that would have benefited from being released like a week at a time. Like, like serialize it and like actually have everyone wait for it to show it's up. It's a little yeah. like I, I'm not gonna like it's too I, fucking heavy or what? It's yeah. heavy and it's a little like unwieldy. It doesn't like you know how um, I'm trying to think of something re- or like a Marvel show where it's released almost like a long ass movie, so the continuity just goes from one episode to the other without anything like really jarring. Mm-hmm. That's not this. Like the oh. whole shit changes sometimes from episode to episode. Like, wait, what? What am I watching now? Yeah. Okay. I really well, love it, but it, I will say the show isn't perfect. It has its problems, but like I overall, I really liked it. I'll, I'll give it yeah. a look. Uh, and then the last thing I watched is Table, because I know TJ, oh, I know uh, TJ and Sean was was the Venom. Let didn't there be you watch, carnage. Uh, Assault on Precinct Thirteen for the first time, oh, which I was fuck. shocked. Oh shit! I watched about... eight things. I watched Assault on Precinct Thirteen. Um, I can't believe you God never bless. seen that. Yeah, I watched Assault on Precinct Thirteen, which because I was texting Sean during, and I was like. Like the streets are gonna get you movies. Like that was a genre of movie that is oh, yeah. like bygone. Like Definitely. like like that. Like your um, your fucking what's the Bronson movie that all of a sudden oh, Death Wish. Like all the Death Wish movies. Like RoboCop kind of falls into that same vein. Well, it, it's it's kind of funny because it actually happened in real life, but it just turned out the street gang was the police. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> what? With the the we're all going to oh, be slaughtered get by street oh, gangs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought you were saying that assault on precinct thirteen actually happened and the police assaulted the precinct. So um, what did you think of it? I oh, I loved it. It, it was I'm great. It's I'm a fucking. Fan it's wild. The main, the what's the name? Napoleon Dynamite. Napoleon, whatever his name is, the main like inmate. McCallum. Yeah, he's fucking. He's 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 great in it. He never really did much anything else after this. Um, what's his name? Duke. From uh from Rocky fame, I didn't realize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's it's fucking it's solid. Like it's so, like it's like his, classic his John his Carpenter track probably. It's real good. It's, real it's real like good. it means all the same Carpenter. Yeah. like kind of notes. Um, no, I fucking I, I loved it. I was like, I got the I, yeah, I totally fucking forgot. I watched that. Jesus, so the first thing any, I watched. Well, it was funny that you mentioned Starship Troopers because when Goggs was texting me about like the idea of uh street gangs taking over the world was a big thing. Like I was telling him in the novel, the starship troopers, the reason America falls apart is because a delinquent youth take over yeah. America because they did, they outlawed spanking. I swear to God, that's the inciting incident yeah, of starship yeah, troopers. I, he's right. Yeah. I read it too. I, yeah. I haven't read that book in a long time. I need to read it. Mine was on, on something on that book. I, I'll just say, I mean, he, <laughs> did you know he, he was an actual registered socialist before that came out? And then he, I, we should do a whole show on him. Just me and Highline you. Highline is fascinating because he basically, he wrote starship troopers was kind of horrified from what he wrote and then wrote a uh, fucking stranger from a strange yeah. land. as like an apology for starship troopers. It'd be um, like the same guy wrote the fucking Torah and the satanic verses. Like it makes yeah. no sense. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, 
Gog, so do you have any other holes in your John Carpenter filmography? Like, is there anything else you haven't seen? All right, I've seen, seen Halloween. Have you seen, Prince, have you seen Prince of Darkness? That's I've, not seen Prince of, I've not seen Prince of Darkness. Have you I've seen, seen In the, the Mouth of Madness? I've seen In the Mouth of Madness. I've seen The that, Fog. I've seen The Thing, Big Trouble in Little China. Uh, what, uh, the, 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 the Escape vampires. from New York. <laughs> I saw John Carpenter's Vampires. So bad. Uh, wait, was it Vampires or was it Bats? Which one was it? Vampires. 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 Okay. Um, With James Woods. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Yes. Cool. Uh, I show my penis twice. There's you saw, uh, you saw uh, Ghosts of Mars because we did. That I saw Ghosts of Mars. I'm trying to think. I got look. I have not seen. What was that first one? The the Prince somebody, of Darkness. Prince Nobody's of Darkness. seen that. That's the, that's the one everybody misses. Have you ever I, seen the the Elvis TV movie with Kurt Russell that he made? I've never no. seen that. Yeah. Uh, have you seen that, it, Sean? No. Yeah, me neither. But no, that's all. Those are all. Oh, of the, and, and the table movie is Venom. You, the table Venom, let, Venom. Let their, Sean, Venom. you watched that too, right? That's the only thing I watched, and I'm glad. All right, all right. So that. Oh wait, you didn't watch uh, the the Rocky Four, the new. Not of that? yet. No, wow. I was too busy watching Venom three different times. My right. God. Uh, on, <laughs> yeah. Well, then uh, I guess uh, Alec. Um, I watched six things. Damn. Oh my god, we're killing it! Let's go! Let's go! Oh, uh, we'll start with one I only watched half of because it turns out I don't like it. Uh-oh. I used to, I used to like it. I don't like it anymore. Uh-oh. Was it RoboCop? Uh, no, I only watched RoboCop for the first time like two months ago. But he oh liked god. it, if I remember correctly. I did. Yeah. Um, School of Rock. Oh, that's not good, good anymore. anymore. Oh, Jack Black's shtick in that movie is so fucking annoying now. I remember I really liked that. Yeah, I remember he, like I remember liking it a lot too. But it does, is it kind of like a, it does not hold up at all. Is, is it kind of like a Paulie Shore thing with him, where it was like it was cool when we were younger, and now it's just like oh, this kind of cringe sort of thing. Probably, and it's all his like his like ribbon to do and shit like that. <laughs> like it's like it's like now I'm scared. I need to update my shtick. Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You probably no, are just think of it. <laughs> you probably do. You probably at least need to drop your fake Irish accent. That's fair. That's, that's an abortion. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> um, but yeah, that movie sucks. I didn't even finish it. Like I finished everything. Like I, I, I finished like every movie. I don't like give up on movies usually, but I it sucks. That. I saw that in a theater. I remember. I think I did too initially. Yeah. And it's, I liked it. I remember liking I remember it. it, it a lot. Like, not like one of my favorite movies, but an enjoyable, easy to watch. Yeah, it's uh, like Pablum. Yeah, yeah, but it's just yeah. it's not it's not good. It's, it's, so do you think you like Legend of the Rent was too hardcore? <laughs> uh, do, you, do, do you think you'll revisit any other Jack Black movies of that period? Because that was like his heyday. Like he was hot right then. Oh, yeah, yeah, but I like, tell you what, man. When I think of other Jack Black movies from that time, like they all kind of sucked. Like oh, Sam like, Silverman Hal. was fun. Shallow Hal sucks. Uh, Jake Sammy Silverman. I did like that. I remember liking that. Um. Shit! What's the uh, year Jackal. one sucks? Yeah. Year one, yeah. Year one's like one of the worst pieces of trash ever made. It's really bad, yeah. Like, it's almost an impressive feat to make a comedy that is that unfunny with so many funny people in it. Yeah, Didn't Andrew, and Diane Rayfield, and I think it was it directed by uh, Harold Ramis. Yeah, I think yeah, it was like the last like, thing he did. And he's oh. like a fucking comedic genius. He's a yeah. legend. And a ghost. Didn't, didn't that come out yeah. the exact same time as <laughs> was it Your Majesty, the one with um Your Oh, Highness. I like that movie. Your Highness. Your Highness. Yeah, with Franco. I like that movie. That movie was and, uh, and, and Your uh, Highness was good. Yeah, with McBride. Yeah. And, and Danny McBride. And yeah. 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 I like I thought I remember that movie being really fun. But it was like another it was like it was like right at the same time. It was like it was like weird period piece comedy duos that just got dropped yeah. at the exact same time. All right, well School Rock sucks, okay. Yeah, School Rock does suck. Uh I watched White Chicks for the first time, and that movie's funny. I've never no, seen it. I've never seen that. It's a lot funnier than I expected. We should do like, a Wayne's Brother month. Oh God! There's a lot of movies. I know. That's why we should do senseless. All the scary the Mayans movies. brothers. Uh, what's I've, the one with the? What's the one where he's one like a little? A he's kid. a baby. Yeah, like he's, little. He's man. not a kid. He's a. Uh, <laughs> he's a grown little, adult, but he dresses like yeah. a, he's. <laughs> 
So like, and at one point, I think he had no. No, he, he's no. a man, man. Oh, <laughs> he's a man, man. And I saw somebody on YouTube freak out about it because, like, I guess he plays. He's like a little person, but he dresses up like a baby. And at one point, he fucks the other, like the other Wayne main character's wife in the movie, and they play it off as like a gag. <laughs> it's like in the reality of this film, this woman just fucked a baby. <laughs> We can watch like "Don't Be a Menace." We can watch the Last Boy Scout. No, we watch a lot of good no, stuff. Only some, the crap. Some, no, some the scary movies. Yeah, like we have yeah, to we're watch watching a... the crap Wayans movie. Not "Don't Be a Menace." And uh... I didn't realize he was supposed to be a midget. I thought he was a a baby with a whole head. <laughs> you thought he was like a boss baby. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, he's a midget man. So uh, white chicks is funny. Oh, what, is, white chicks what if is it was funny. like sorry, Fred pardon, Williamson's pardon. boss blank baby? Oh my god! Like, I'd watch that. Uh, 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 wait, 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 isn't that the same you, plot as uh, like, like we didn't it, review it, that fucking movie? Right. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a tricky review. <laughs> what was the what's the movie? Isn't this the same movie as like was it the orphanage? What's the one where or the 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 adopted where the little the girl old, is really an old woman and she's pretending old, to be a the, lady the whole time? It was called Orphan. It was not, Orphan. It was really it was bad. not a it was not a comedy. I don't. Think. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, Damon uh, Wayans' Orphan would be good. I watched Rush Hour. <laughs> Hell yeah, that would be a fucking blast. Is that that like, did you? Oh my god, it's so fun. Have like, you ever seen the deleted scenes? Uh, I saw some of like the uh, like the in the credits they have some of the outtakes. Oh yeah, like <laughs> that movie's so a fucking blast. I want to watch the other two again now, but like I see that and I'm like, Brett Ratner can make a movie. Like, how did he butt fuck so many movies so badly? I mean, when I you think... know he could, you know he could do it. Well, didn't we all kind of like the X Men Three when we rewatched it? Like, or at least didn't I thought we did. It? Yeah, we did. But he's hasn't he done other stuff that we were like, yeah. what the fuck? Like, yeah. I don't remember yeah. specifics, but like, Rush Hour is a fucking blast. And like, what's his name? Uh, Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker have such good chemistry. Yeah. And yeah. Jackie Chan's like, this was in his, his like heyday of coming to America. Cause I think it came out like 98 or 99. It might have been one of his first movies of that like rash of Jackie Chan movies. Yeah, like yeah. that. And, uh, was it uh, Shanghai, Shanghai Nights or whatever? Knew. Yeah, yeah. Shanghai Nights, yeah. Maybe, I, gotta, I have a confession. Watch, I've I never wanna, seen. I really, really want to watch that again too. Cause I remember enjoying that when I was younger. But uh, Rush Hour was a fucking blast, man. It's really funny. And I was surprised. I've a never lot seen of, Rush uh, Hour. A lot of racist Asian jokes. You get to hear Jackie Chan say the N word. Yeah. Hell yeah! Which is <laughs> to, to like a bartender or something, right? Does he yeah. Know what's and up? then he proceeds. Yeah. Oh, but he, he, it's not... he doesn't. He doesn't understand that it's a slur, and the yeah. bartender goes to hit him, and then Jackie Chan beats the fuck out of everybody. <laughs> in the bar. It's not hard R though, right? Like it's. It... I don't think so. Well, yeah. Everything in in that accent is a hard R. Like that's not his <laughs> fault. Well, they, no can't R. Pronounce, they can't pronounce the R. <laughs> um, just finished watching, uh, in my opinion, Will Ferrell's best movie. Me and my my wife were debating it for a few minutes. Uh, Talladega Nights. I love that movie. That movie's tremendous. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to give the nod to Old School. He's really good in Old School. Uh, nah, I got to go I with Talladega Nights, Nights, I think. Old School wasn't even the conversation. It was between well, Step Brothers and Talladega Nights. I like Step Nights. Brothers. I like, I like. I think both of those are better than Old School. Step Brothers. I put. I. I have something. I have a weird affinity for uh, Casa de Mi the, Padre. The, for uh, <laughs> for Semi Pro, I love that movie. You, you do love, love that movie. One. You brought it up yeah. a lot. I yeah. don't know why. Like it's a good movie, but it's not. Even Gox, it's not like Step Brothers. It's not Talladega Nights. I, we need to circle back real quick, guys. How have you never seen Rush Hour? I feel like. That's a I've movie never that seen was it. Like, I've never seen any of them. Any of all three of them. Crazy originally. to me. I feel like that's Gogs, a movie that was like just, permanently on DVD at every house just, I was ever. Just at. buy the steel book with the most exquisite oil painting you've ever seen in your life. Of Sean's Jackie right. Chan. And Sean Chris and I Tucker. have talked. Sean and I have had extensive <laughs> conversations about how amazing that cover is. Yeah, if we get a Jackie Chan month in here, we're watching at least one Rush Hour movie. Oh, well, good. I need. Yeah. I thought I need we were, to. We're gonna do January. January. Well, I threw it out there. We didn't uh, like it. I like it. I, I'm for it. I go. love January because I'm going to pick up fucking Hong Kong bangers. Oh, Drunken good. Master 2, Sub, bitch. Subtitles. Oh, I'm picking Police Story. Ooh. Which one? I might do that one. one. 
Did, I, did anyone else watch that gritty one that I think just me and Sean watched? The 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 foreigner is that what it's called? I've seen it. That movie yeah, really, fucking. Bought. I like it a lot. It's really good. I have I have not seen that one. That's with That's, Pierce um, Brosnan, right? He's in it. Correct. Yeah. yeah, I like that movie. Um, two I more, like Jackie. Two Chan. more two more movies. Uh, one of which um, was Forty Two. Oh, the, uh, Jackie, oh, the Jackie Robinson. Robinson? Jackie I've Robinson never seen movie. that. It's a good. It's very. It's it's really good. Um, my, my who's in that? Chad's with Chad Jackie Robinson. Oh, Jackie Jackie Robinson. Robinson. <laughs> um, it's Chad. It's like Boseman. those real old school biopics where everybody played themselves. Chadwick Boseman and uh, Harrison Ford plays Branch Ricky. No shit, I didn't know Harrison Ford was in the movie. Yeah, and honestly, my biggest complaint is there's too much of Harrison Ford in it. Like I like yeah. Harrison Ford, and he's good in the role, but the movie is. Is so it a white he, savior movie, kind of? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's way, it's way too much with him and the white savior, where it should have been a lot more following Jackie, and like his struggles and the shit that he dealt with. But like some of those things, I was reading on like Wikipedia and some other sites. Like, man, that guy went through some shit. Oh, yeah. like not just off the field, like on the field too. Like and World is, War Two. I can imagine. Yeah. Like, like it is crazy the shit people were doing to him. Like. In front of crowds, like on the field with everybody, everybody yeah, yeah. there, like it is absolutely bonkers. Alec, uh, you Alan, a fantastic memory. What was the HBO Negro Leagues movie? Was it called Soul of the Game with Delroy Lindo as Satchel Page? Does that ring a bell to you at all? Uh, I vaguely remember something like okay. that. Um, but yeah, I started reading some shit about him, and like the other Negro players were mad that he got picked. To be like that, he was like selected to be the first one because like he was good, but there were such other players that were way better. Yeah, Josh Gibson. Yeah, Josh Gibson. They didn't want Satchel Paige because he was too old and he'd only be able to play a few years. Like yeah. guys who were like all time greats that they uh, that they just didn't didn't pick because they had to get the right guy, and they yeah, picked him made... like they picked him like as much for his temperament as. Yeah. His skills because they needed somebody that could not Take all retaliate that yeah. and like just oh, like so be an shoulder everything. Kind of that's why so they vetted they vetted him to be like like able to withstand all. That's what well, got yeah, him the he, nod. He was like a tank commander in World War II, I believe, or part of a tank yeah. battalion. He was like a, like a model soldier, citizen kind of guy. So they need to make sure this guy, this wasn't going to be someone that fucks up and ruins it for everybody. This had to be the guy that can yeah, just, like, somebody that the immedi- immediately is going to, like, lose his shit and cause a fight or something. Yeah. And Yeah, that's why pre-integration then, baseball stats don't mean shit, because like, yeah, Satchel exactly. Page finally did get to the league, and he was probably 75 years old. He was still <laughs> killing everybody. Yeah. It reminds me of the fucking, that I, one of my favorite of all time SNL sketches where Conan O'Brien was the greatest boxer in history until they let black people box. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's just all these white guys. He just got destroyed. You guys can't see it at home, but he's doing the old timey like boxing. Like the hands out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like they say he's like 110 and 0. And then he's in a great boxing. And he just starts getting. It was like the rain. first punch. Like it was the first <laughs> <Yes>. drop. <laughs> I love that. That is like one of the best. That God, episode. The are just fucking hosing the Ravens already. Yes, that ep- oh, Jesus Christ. Christ! That episode where Conan like guest hosted on SNL is one of the all time best SNLs ever. Because that also had Molecular, the Molecular Man, Molecular Man, the Molecular uh, Man, the Molecular <laughs> Man. Like, oh, it's so good. Like, you kids out there, go download the Conan O'Brien SNL. And I heard the, SNL. wasn't well received, like when it first happened, because oh, it was just it's, so like absurdist. It's so, it, I not think to... about it all the time. Like, there's so many bits in that that I just I kill. Well, I'm not saying it. it's not great. I'm saying like at the time, I think for Gen Pop, it was like. People were like, what the fuck is this? Not to yeah. get it off track, but the ball's on John Harbaugh to go for it on fourth and two from his own 30 in the first quarter. Yeah, okay. and now the refs are holding the ball and not letting him snap it, even though, like, yeah. this is insane. Is there a challenge or something? I don't All know right, what's this, going this on. Is, this is a Justin bad Clyde. podcast. Yeah. Let's, let's move on. Sorry, guys. Football, the football. <laughs> well, we're talking about it's draft day, baby. It's all about football. It's, yeah. I, yeah but it's what's, your last, current, what's your last current, movie, Alec? A current football game. Yeah, my last movie is 
Cleveland Browns can go rotten hell. <laughs> Starring. <laughs> and again, oh my god, I'm not going to be able to focus on this podcast. The Ravens are getting absolutely <laughs> No shattered. one else is either, don't worry. Um, the last movie I watched was Ghostbusters Afterlife, and I really enjoyed oh! it. I thought it was a lot of fun. Oh, you liked um, it? Okay. If anything, my only complaint about it is that they brought the old Ghostbusters back at the end for like nostalgia purposes, but I thought it was a fun, a fun, enjoyable movie. Oh, I think it's not getting, in it the I whole time. Okay, no. good. I think they. I I don't know what. I from what I I think it's not getting great reviews, but it's getting like positive like IMDb scores and stuff like that from. Uh, and- Nice. Every person I've seen posted about it said they really liked it, but like yeah. film critics, and I assume it's like critics hate it, but people hate love it. it. <laughs> like, like I think, like, yeah, it's got I like, feel a, like a seven point seven on uh, IMDb with a fifty nine meta score. I think, people love your, it. Critics I, hate I, it. I think the critics backed themselves into a corner with the last movie because now it's like, well, now we can't like this movie because it makes us look bad if we didn't like the last movie. I think there's a lot of like weird jock. This franchise yeah. has become like weirdly political about for a dumb dumb movie about ghost exterminators. It shouldn't even be a fucking well, franchise, but that's just what, my <laughs> Alex. What are your what's your opinion of the original Ghostbusters? Do you just like a movie you really really like? Um, it's something that I do. Th- I I think is excellent and like a great movie. I didn't have as much of an affinity for it when I was younger. Like I didn't watch it when it first came out, but maybe like in the nineties or maybe I think when the second one came out is when I became like acquainted with the first one. Um, (laughs) Yeah. This said like for a long time, like I would have said the second one is, uh, was better than the first one just because. Wow. That's a hot take. As a a kid, (laughs) I, I thought it was like, I loved it. Because of the Nintendo controller, um, I don't know, maybe, but like yeah. this, that the song from I think we talked about it when I watched it like a few years ago. The uh, was it "Lift Me Up"? Higher Your love's higher. lifting yeah, me higher, higher. And higher. Yeah, I yeah. could recite that whole song for years just because of watching that movie over and over. <laughs> I'll, de- I'll defend Ghostbusters two to the end. It's I think it, Ghostbusters one superior, but movie. I like Ghostbusters it's not as, two. It's not nearly as good as the first one, but it's not a bad I, movie. I, Ooh, I uh, think it's god awful. I, I hate Ghostbusters <laughs> two. <laughs> That's why I when really, they when they really go ahead. I'm sorry. I was oh, I was going to just say I enjoyed Afterlife a lot. I thought it was uh. I thought it was a good time. It hit like enough nostalgia beats, but also gave like all the new people something else to do. Um, the one kid is a podcaster, and his his name is Podcast. And I was like, one of us should just change our name to Podcast. The podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um, How about Gogs change his names to Pods? Mm. But it's fun. Yeah. Like I don't know. I don't, I don't honestly. I don't know. You how, go to the, how you go to the theater to watch that, Alec? Sorry. Yes, we went to. The theater in East Point. Um, East Point. East Point. Does that the Dundalk Hall? Over, over oh. by like Dundalk and like. Oh, okay. oh we, we saw Spider Man. You, you and I went and saw a movie there once, Alec, didn't we? Isn't that the no. theater we. No. You and I saw oh, no. Into the Spider Verse there, I think. Oh. It's got the really cool movie poster, like the old movie posters in the lobby. They have like a, the Jaws one with like. Ooh, that's cool. It's got like this pic- picture of the jaws, and then like crosshairs and the tank in the middle. Oh, and it's I got like a uh, Art Deco Jurassic Park one. Into it's that. got it's that like I I was I was there once years ago, and I still remember it as the theater that has the cool posters, and they still have the cool posters. <laughs> and they still up. have them. That's awesome. Yeah, when I went the other day, I was like, "Fuck yeah!" That's but uh, awesome. I th- I think I don't know. I'll watch I, it. I I, when it comes I really to honestly digital, like watch it. like I don't know because. If you guys will enjoy it, just because, I'm a, yeah, I'm a cynical. You guys are a lot harder on movies than I am, but uh, I thought except it was for the movies that you're incredibly hard on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I, all right. I, I don't know. Maybe you have higher standards than me. For uh, I, I don't know no. about that. For mm, things, I don't wait know. Till, wait till you hear what I got to say about Venom Two. <laughs> have you very seen low brow. And I've dated <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> all right, Alec. Anything? My else, standards buddy? are so low. There's magma on them. I'm dressed like an asshole. Like, like the <laughs> X-Men character? Magma? I wish. I watched uh, the first two episodes of Hawkeye. They're both really good. Is Kingpin in it yet? I need to do that. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I haven't seen Kingpin. Kingpin is not in it yet. Um, Are there Russians only, in it? Uh, the tracksuit mafia. Yeah. Are they in it? 
Yes. yes. That's and, awesome. Uh, oh, I'm so the, excited. At the end of episode two, they inter- introduced, uh, what's her name? Is it Maya Lopez? Echo? Oh, oh shit. Yeah. Echo's in it? Which, oh, like, I didn't awesome. even know she was in it. They introduced her. I was like, oh, fuck. Because she was... Because she was Ronan in the comics for a while. Mm-hmm. So I'm yeah. wondering if they're going to give her, like, the Ronan suit. That would make sense, yeah. Like, but it's, the first two episodes are really good. It's it's a lot of fun, and it's, like, way more lighthearted than any of the other stuff they've done on the TV show so far. Good. It's, like, all set at Christmas. There's, like, Christmas music playing all over the place. Is Kate uh, Haley, cool? Yeah, she's great. Because I, I, I mean, character. Haley Steinfeld is she's she's a, a tremendous actress. actress. Like, she was great in, like... I mean, she was great in Bumblebee. Her voice was great in uh, Into the Spider Verse. She's fantastic in like, fucking uh, the Coen Brothers movie, the uh, True Grit. She's oh, a yeah. girl. I always True forget Grit. that was her. Yeah. That was Bumblebee so was ago. a lot of fun. I really enjoyed Bumblebee that. Bumblebee was so good. Like no one talks about that movie. <laughs> it was so fucking good. Like, and I hate the Transformers movies, and I thought that movie was a blast. Yeah, it's I, good. I loved it, and I don't think they're ever gonna. They're like they're not gonna follow up on it. I think the next Transformers movie is gonna like completely ignore it yeah they're going it, back they're going back to the big like ensemble transformers it was so good stuff. and yeah. the transformers looked right like it was like an like, actual oh. movie yeah yeah oh, that was it had so weird arc. Oh, this is not just jokes the whole time so. yeah. um anyway. no that was it that's everything i gotta um, watch it is there just two episodes out right now are they doing yeah they like... released they released the first two last wednesday I and then that. it's only gonna be six episodes when it's done so if you want to oh, nice. wait to watch it all, it's only going to be a couple of weeks. Nice. It's only like a six episode run, but so far it's really good. Nice. Um, I enjoy it. Uh, who's left? Uh, TJ me and Sean. Oh yeah, but Sean's only Sean's thing is tabled, so just me. Yeah. Uh, okay. I watched uh, two things. Two uh, things. Thank you. Uh, yeah. One is tabled, uh, and I'm not going to spoil anything. But I watched Edgar Wright's Last Night in Soho. No. Oh. And I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. Um, it's the most frustrating. Co- Again, I am not spoiling this movie because I'm sure all th- the all three of you are going to want to watch it. So I'm not going to spoil anything about it, storyline wise. Um, but it's the most co- it's the most frustrating kind of bad movie for me because the acting is great, the set pieces are great, the direction is great. There's so many things about the movie that it has going for it, but the script is just dog shit. And there's a point in this movie where I'm like, oh, this movie is just retarded. Like, it's it's so, like, Edgar Wright has written some of the, like, like, all his movies are very cleverly written and very tight scripts that come up with, like, clever little, like, things that that kind of subvert your expectations and like you know what i mean like i would there's examples in all of his without without spoiling is is he too far outside his lane is that the problem like that is half of the problem yes uh so this movie is very clearly trying to be a tribute to uh i always say it wrong giallo films uh yeah like suspiria yeah yeah and you can tell with the use of color and like the the cuts and the editing the problem is, is that those movies never had fucking ghosts in them, and he's so reliant on these fucking ghosts, and the effect is so cheesy, like, it just, it just kills me. But that's not the worst thing about the movie. Again, I won't tell you what it is, but you all will know when you see it. Like, there's, there's, I, I, again, I'm trying to be as vague as possible, but my, I hate fucking movies where there's, like, a big twist and literally, it could have been resolved by characters asking what the other character's name was. And it's like, wait a minute, that guy wasn't this guy? No, that's Steve. I mean, you could have just asked the fucking guy what his name was. But, nah. Like, it's just dumb. Like, it, by the end of the movie, it's, like, so fucking dumb. The main character has, like, uh, basically the Sixth Sense powers where she can see dead people. But then, like, she kind of like she sees everything up to a point but it's not it's like ill-defined i don't know this is such a frustrating movie because the half that i watched made it sound like she she almost she was like quantum leaping a little bit i guess i i don't know know, the first half i watched i need to watch the second half the first half i was was into but she sees her mom like what is that like and that is this a movie is it a movie movie? that could be saved in an edit or does the whole script just need to be blown up 
you could save it in an edit because you could just cut out the last 25 minutes of the movie. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's so frustrating because I thought that um, what's her name Mackenzie David Mackenzie no it's uh, Josephine uh, Josephine Mackenzie Josephine Mackenzie I don't think that's her name but the the oh, girl from Jojo Rabbit and from Old that we liked Mackenzie something she's really good in the movie. Wait, uh, we liked her in Old. I mean, I she was in Old. I don't think we liked her in Old. I mean, Thomas she, and Mackenzie. Thomas, Thomas and Mackenzie. I think she's a great actress. She's good in the movie. She does. She her performance is really good. I think Anya Taylor Joy, of course, is is great. And how is got, Matt? How is Matt Smith? Because everything good. I really because everything I see him in, I just can't stand him in outside of Doctor Who. Well, and he's I really a don't stone. Even like him that much in Doctor Who. He's my least favorite Doctor. Hot take. I know people love him, but uh, David Tennant. Fuck yeah. But, uh, I like the guy with the leather jacket and the shaved head. Which one was he? Eccleston. He's great. Chris Eccleston. Yeah. Nobody likes Eccleston, but that season is really good. And it's I the only see. bit of the show I've watched. So. I will fucking die on that hill. The Eccleston season is really good. And, like, and it, had, fuck, it had to be, because that was like the reboot season. Yeah, I really like that season, and I like Eccleston a lot. Um, but anyway, no, uh, Matt Smith, Alec, is really good in the movie. He plays like a scumbag, but he's good in the movie. Like, everyone is good in the movie. It's just the script is so fucking dumb. And I really wish that y'all would see it so I could talk more about it. Because I almost did, like, my own little video about it because I was so frustrated with it. But, yeah, I, I, it, it pains me to say it. Like, I, I love Edgar Wright. Like, I legit love Edgar Wright. And I want to like this movie. And I would, I want to give this movie like a lot of like leeway but i can't i just did not like it ended and i was just like i didn't care for that like it's funny i you know i think a lot about like us all together when we watch movies and i remember i remember when we all watched the last jedi in the theater and i sean was the first person that got up and was like talking to me as i got up out of the chair and he goes i didn't like that and that's how i felt about this movie like (laughs) i was like disappointed yeah I know his face. Sean's face was just like he was just like it's sunken and sad. He's I, like, I think, I, I, if I recall correctly, I leaned over to Alec during like the first ten minutes of the movie. <laughs> I was like, I don't think I liked it. And it's one of those things where I'm just praying somebody else didn't like it because I don't want to be that <laughs> asshole that hates the movie. But I mean, that's how I felt about this because I was like, it, and it sucks because this this actually this movie last night in Soho. It, it, it defies the 20 minute rule because the movie is really interesting. Like about halfway through, it's like really good. Actually more than halfway through, it's like interesting. It's doing stuff. And I'm like, where is this going? And then when it gets to where it's going, you're like, Oh, okay. Speaking of real quick, speaking of dog shit scripts, I know you saw it, but Alec or Gogs, did you see that red notice is the number one most watched movie in the history of Netflix? I mean, I don't find that. I don't yeah. find that odd. That like, makes the sense. Star, the star I mean, we're it. the most listened to podcast in the world, so clearly it's Correct. our fault, right? <laughs> like that's why everybody to everybody watched the movie to like listen to our review of it. So obviously. I mean, let there be carnage made a half a billion dollars. So at this point, and, and it deserves every me. penny of it. So let's get into that. I also watched Venom. Let there be carnage, and oh boy! Can, can, can before, I hold on, hold on one can second, I Sean. Real, I got to no, get this no. thought out of my head. Go okay. ahead. You go ahead. I'll, 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 I'm holding. I on am prefacing this by realizing that this is not even an actual film, and it's <laughs> like abject garbage. Before Sean, I say anything else, Sean, this is the first movie that shot in 1.5 speed. Like, <laughs> 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 looked at TJ in like, the movie, and I was like, "This whole movie is third act. Like, how is no, that?" No, it doesn't possible? have. A, it doesn't have. It has a second act. Like they break. <laughs> Alec, can we talk about this movie without? Yeah, I don't care. I, I, I'll, okay. I'll watch it at some point, but I'm yeah, not. Alec, Alec, you saw the first one, right? This movie. Yeah. I so Venom it. and Eddie we have it together. <laughs> Venom. All I remember yeah, is you two saw song. it together. I saw it on a date, and I think it caused us to break up because I was laughing one. so loud. Because me and TJ saw it together, and then, like, we were <laughs> saying right. how terrible it was. And, like, two days later, Sean was like, uh. Sean loved it. I was howling. <laughs> Bad this news, movie. Guys. <laughs> yeah. It was like. It's all second act. Like they, they fucking, they break up. They have a domestic like abuse scene. It's like a, a fucking marriage story with Venom and Tom Hardy. And then they meet the villain. And like in most movies, like the end of the second act, they have their kind of like meet and fight. And yeah. then they have a fight. The movie just ends. And like, 
there it's like they're like we this movie can have zero exposition in it none and, not and one the, second the, the one like, well, from, we, well, we gotta have Snatch, exposition well it's the like, one we guy have, Snatch turns to a vampire or yeah, something for no reason and they, uh, it's like well we gotta have some exposition sorry but i'm gonna draw a cartoon over top of it while you're doing it because i can't sit through people talking for more than two seconds so <laughs> woody harrelson is telling his backstory and like it looks like a uh, what's that guy's name john johan vasquez the guy that made like uh, invader zim and johnny the homicide oh, yeah. looks like, yeah. it looks like cover from every corn album like it's, it's just like <laughs> it's, the movie is fucking insane first of all the venom voice now sounds like kill face and like Dude, the here's the problem. I don't have any I didn't see the first one. So my only frame of references is just you doing the Venom voice. <laughs> like, and it's so pretty good. Think about, yeah, it's pretty good. John, John is the best. Like it's the I keep I hope this franchise goes on forever because I hope it's like they make like Venom goes to college. I hope it turns into like an earnest series because like I have not been so entertained oh, in my entire life. Street. Hell yeah. <laughs> it was oh. just like it's like, hey, you know how the the only thing I'll say bad about this movie is that like it's intentionally stupid, which I appreciate that Andy Serkis is like, oh, this movie's dumb as fuck. But like yeah. the first one is unintentionally stupid, what makes it yeah. somewhat funnier. Yeah. But like it's like I do love because I fucking hate the 90s and comics like the Todd McFarlane era, although I still kind of enjoy his pencils. But the fact oh, that yeah. Carnage, like again, this is a heavy spoiler, so if you care about this movie at all. Uh, skip to the part where we're not talking you can't about spoil it. Spoil this movie; it's impossible. <laughs> so, Gosh, what are you punching at? Sorry, so, 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 oh, don't worry about it. Uh-huh. Carnage is like he's like, all I wanted you to do was be my friend, and and he's like, yeah, you know, Carnage. And then Venom goes, "Fuck this guy!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like where did that come? I looked at I looked at TJ when he said that. I go, "What the fuck I was is in this? tears?" The Venom slaps Eddie like uh, fucking Tim Meadows used to do his like Turner on Weekend Update and like is yeah. apologizing to Kevin Nealon. Yeah. Like, oh, Eddie, I'm I, sorry. I didn't mean. I, I, there's I, there's I like... a there's a band that covers the Venom theme song like it's a real song in this world for some reason. Like, also... So it it implies oh. that that song exists independent to the movie that you're in. So that's just a song in that world, like the Venom theme song. I I, uh, I personally, one of my favorite aspects of the film is that Venom can speak in Eddie's mind. Like he he can, they're symbiotic. Right, but so but he, for the he benefit of the of, audience and he, the, gags, every, that Eddie every has time to talk they to him talk, out loud. Yeah, every time they talk, <laughs> Venom manifests himself outside of Eddie, and they talk. There's a point where they're like talking in a toilet, and they're just like talking <laughs> out loud. Or there's a part where Ve- Eddie Eddie is just going to see uh, what's his name, Cassidy. Please, Cassidy, and he's Please like he's Cassidy. talking to Venom. He's like, "Oh, you fucking bitch! I hate you. You're so stupid." And the guard's like, "What's wrong?" He's like, "I'm just practicing. That's not practicing anything. Just I'm just <laughs> practicing, which is the funniest shit." And there's like. He's like, I thought Venom was dead. He's like, no, I'm playing dead like the dog. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> he, like, Venom gets separated from Eddie and he's bouncing around. He ends up at this, like, weird costume rave because it's at Halloween slash And then he basically comes mark. out. Like, it's just one big analogy. Yeah, for, what like, was that about? Right? But it's like, it's, you know, they're like, oh, cool costume. But this thing's still nine feet tall. Yeah, and he just gets up on stage with all his glow sticks. He's like, Eddie sucks. <laughs> and like, yeah, yeah, and they're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also like that just to bring that point up. Like, so at that at that point, Venom again, he's a symbiote, so he has to possess people in or, or possess is probably the wrong word, but he has to you know use people body with somebody to live. I didn't. Well, so he's like he has killing to be like, people. Yeah, apparently he has to be drift compatible, which is something that's yeah. not introduced. And yeah. just thrown away immediately because they're like, "This movie, we're wrapping this bitch up in eighty minutes. I don't give a fuck." Like <laughs> he wore out, he wore out like five or six different people. Like, oh. except Mrs. Chen made it, I guess. Yeah, for some and, reason. Also, like uh, Stephen Graham is he's an actor. He's the guy that was in Snatch. He's in a ton of shit. He was in fucking Public Enemies, War, 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 Empire. Yeah. Like he's in a ton of. He's in a great movie called This Is London or This Is England. Which this I is think England. Is yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic movie. But that guy's a great actor. In this movie, he looks like Discount Marky Mark. They gave him some weird ass hair. No, you know who he looks like? Go ahead. He looks like, uh, hey, brother, that guy from uh, fucking Punisher Warfare. 
no, 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 no. The, the brother, no. Looney Bin Jim, Doug, yeah, uh, oh, what's his name? Oh, the guy was banging 15 year olds in yeah, Costa yeah, Rica. Yeah. Used, yeah, used yeah. to be, yeah, yeah. She's like 30 now, but yeah. yeah. Everyone turns 30 eventually. The guy from the, the, the Green Mile has no plot, really. No. Which is like Shriek is introduced for no reason, and but not like that doesn't resolve anything because like you introduce her because she has like the screaming powers, I guess. Well, also, like but they just drop a church bell on top of her to shut her up. Didn't they introduce? Should just amplify her powers. Didn't they introduce think. other ve- like symbiotes in the first movie? Like wasn't there? A- Alec, help me out on this one. There was like a yellow symbiote. Well, one yeah, of them there died. Was, and like their lab, there was several. What's the yellow one from the comics? Isn't that like toxin? I don't Toxin. remember. I don't remember all. There's so many Sinistro. of them in the comics. Yeah, the, well, all those like secondary symbiotes suck. Like even Venom's not like a great character. Like I'm sure, like if I was a How bigger Spider-Man you? fan, I would have a more affinity for it. But it's just stupid '90s shit. But like the fact that Venom's like stuck on calling themselves the Lethal Protector, like the comic book subtitle like is comic, fucking hysterical because yeah. he won't stop saying it. Yeah, like, she didn't know she needed a lethal protector, and then they have a <laughs> fucking slapstick scene where Eddie's just like staring off into space, and fucking Venom is cooking dinner and just slapping shit around the apartment like the Swedish chef. Like I could not stop laughing at this <laughs> fucking like Venom movie. Scene the whole time, like don't worry, be happy or something yeah, like that. Like, like that. was it? Was it directed by? Wasn't the first one directed by Ruben Fleischer? Yeah. Was this one too? No, no Andy Circus. Oh. Gollum. Gollum Weird. himself directed. It feels like movie. the movie, like they turned in the movie at two and a half hours and they just cut it without looking at it somehow. Like they just like uh just delete 30 minutes here, just delete 20 minutes there. Cause like it goes like they meet, he tells Cletus the story, the symbiote gets him, he escapes, and then they kill Carnage. Like the, that's the whole movie, and it's over like immediately. And Stephen Graham turns into a vampire for some reason. Yeah, for some I'm sure it has something to do with Mobius or something, but like Oh god, I, that movie looks like that looks so like bad. dog shit. Yeah, it looks and at the so at the end of the Mor- Morbius trailer, like there's a like, scene where the, the guy's like, "Who are you?" And he's like, "I am Venom." No, I'm just kidding. I'm Morbius. Yeah, like what is that? It looks so. Oh, awful. They have a mid credit scene where he's gonna like telepathically show Tom Party something, and they just shift dimensions for no reason. I guess it's tied to Far From Home. Yeah, like, so. it, it, you see we, we, you see Tom Holland on the screen. So. But like literally they're in a shitty hotel and it shifts into a good hotel, but it's not explained in the narrative of this movie, so it's just like whatever. Like also it's, like I don't know if show, I want to I don't want to see Tom Holland interact with this Venom. <laughs> like, I do. Oh god. I want to see every movie interact with this Venom. I hope they remake the boy in the striped pajamas with Venom. I don't give a fuck. Popeye Doyle versus Venom. No, come on. Hell yeah. Jesus Christ, the boy in the striped pajamas. <laughs> uh, don't Google it if you don't know what he's talking about. Jesus what are you Christ. doing in there? Do you want to <laughs> any sucks? No. Yeah, I don't know why he's sitting around in those pajamas. He's just come out here with us with hmm. the lethal protectors. Lethal protectors. Like, it's so Dude, did, Watching this movie, were you like, I, I said it to Gogs. I was like, <laughs> Tom Hardy is like one of our best actors. It was so Tom Hardy bad. is an Indeed. international treasure. We had to go through the list of we're like, is Tom Hardy like more misses than hits now? We found it. No, he's more hits than misses. But we had to. It made us go through his whole repertoire to go. Okay. Well, okay, I don't yeah, even count we still this. Got it. It. I don't count this as a miss because like anybody else would be phoning this in, and he is. He I don't is know trying. what it is he's doing, but he is doing. Stuff. He's leaning all the way in for sure. Well, he's what? doing the Venom voice too, right? That's him. Yeah, I don't think he did it in this one. That's why it sounds like more like Kill Face sometimes. Than I mean, he's credited as just doing it. Oh, is it? Oh. Okay, then yeah. Maybe they change. Well, the pitch is definitely different. Every once in a while, you catch a little Bane, like when he was yeah. like like going into a monologue. I think that's the Kill Face. Oh, that's what he should have done. He should have done the Bane voice uh, for Venom. I was born in the symbiote. You only <laughs> adopted it. He, they don't want Venom eating people's heads, so he just has live chickens in his apartment. <laughs> and he, named them, he named the chickens Sonny and Cher. Yeah, Sonny, <laughs> I can't eat them. Sonny and Cher are best friends. <laughs> <laughs> Is like does New York City not have like you can buy brains to eat? Is that like, is that where you're drawn? Is that the hill you're no, gonna make? You, know you know what? I'm just you know what point also, made. Also, they're in Gags, San Francisco. Gags, what did what did you think about this movie? It was fucking insane. Like it didn't make a lick of sense from start from cover to cover. I mean, it's just a it's just a fucking 
wild ride of just the CGI is a mess. mess. It's like a fucking CGI, CGI is just like, a mess. Yeah. And all, everyone's got nebulous power sets that I barely understand. His like ex girlfriend's gonna bang some dude who's kind of a cuck, but then sort of helpful, but still kind of a cuck. Well, he's in the first one. I guess he, like I no, he, no, he is all. for sure. He's the doctor. <laughs> that, wasn't, that wasn't a question. That yeah, no, no, I wasn't. I wasn't putting it out there for the crowd. I'm, no, he was the doctor <laughs> that when they find the alien symbiote crawling all over him, he goes, "Huh, that's weird." And then they let yeah. him go. Oh yeah, I forgot. And then they're, all they're in the. He's like, "Oh, Dan sucks." The guy's name is Dan. He's like, "I hate Dan. Tell Dan he sucks." <laughs> does this, do like, they, I'm just kidding. I love Dan. Do they do the? Do they put the googly eyes on him in this one? No, no googly. I'm surprised they didn't, because like Andy Serkis is aware that this movie is terrible. Like, like he knows. But it's just crazy that they turn this in. And they're like, yeah, we'll give you $180 million for this fucking, like, But it made, like, a billion dollars. Like, $485 million. Yeah. It's doing it's great. Well it's doing just fine. I, like, I, I don't know. I, it is not I, boring. I, I, I said it is this, not boring. It is confusing. I said, it's not even confusing. It's not even confusing. It's oh, just it's not confusing. dumb. Well, it's too stupid to be confusing, but like if it had a plot, it would be confusing. It would confuse itself if it tried to have a plot. <sighs> yeah. I, I, I said this analog, but I, I think it is a it is a refreshing take that the that Venom Let There Be Carnage rekindled Sean's love for the movies. Like who would have yeah, thought that? I think I texted it, but it's like some kind of like Dadaist anti art installation. Like it's like whoever made this also hates movies, and I'm going to just like I'm, I'm taking Sony superhero movies to strange new places. <laughs> uh, all right, let's get into our feature presentation. TJ, uh, did all... you enjoy watching the movie? Not did you like the movie, but did you Venom? have fun watching it? Yeah, I loved it. No, okay, it was great. hilarious. <laughs> I thought it was great. I. I like this one way more than the first one because, yeah. like, it was so fucking. I mean, it's like we all just said. It's so fucking stupid. Like, and it's over. Like, it's like it's like quicker than a hiccup. Like, it's fucking over before didn't it starts. You, didn't you expect like after the church scene for them to have another half an hour of a movie? Because that's how movies typically work. Yeah, it's like they just were like, whatever. It we got venom, and then, then just fucking you, make the movie. It's like, almost like it, they just. They just turn around to the camera like, you guys good with this? Do we have to do it? No, we're good. All right, cool. No, we're out of here. Like, it, <laughs> like, it's it's fucking hilarious. Like, I would love to meet the poor sucker that's got to write the fucking synopsis on the, the DVD for this. Like, what the hell, what the hell do you write? Because shit it, goes it, down. That's it. <laughs> it's three, it. Three words. It's like the dumbest fucking movie I've ever <laughs> seen. But it's like, it's kind of brilliant in how fucking stupid it is. Does like, anyone I, like... Anyone deeper in Venom lore? Is that actually how the symbiote got in? Is that was that how Carnage was born? Was he just like no. an offspring of yes. Venom? Yes, he's an offspring of Venom, but like not. He didn't like Cletus didn't bite Eddie to get his blood <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. But like I, I I don't know Alex, you can probably help me with this. But like he just get, I know that like the story is that Venom gave birth to Carnage somehow but Dude, I don't I think when I don't Venom know when Venom and Eddie broke out of prison at one point Cletus was his cellmate and like a piece of Carnage was somehow left in the cell and it bonded to Cletus there you go. Oh, you, you missed the great Woody Harrelson line. Well, he's also a lot of fun in this. Where he's after great. he fights Eddie, he turns to the warden or whoever and goes, "Hey man, I've drank a lot of blood, and <laughs> yeah. this isn't regular blood. <laughs> also, also, there is a inexplicably there is a they cast a young Woody Harrelson in the movie, but they choose to dub over his voice with <laughs> old Woody Harrelson's <laughs> voice, which is did like, have, oh, did you catch the fucking pos? I hope is intentional reference to three billboards where he's doing the voiceover of the letter. Holy shit! No, but it's now that you mention it, like it's the yeah. Same now that you mention it, yeah. Jesus Christ! And try being sensitive and being nice to people. No one will think you're gay. It's a fucking great movie, though. It's so <laughs> fucking stupid. Like, if you want something different, watch Venom. Let there be carnage. <laughs> it is more different than you'll ever know. Like, I, I, I don't, there's so many. Just like what? Like I. <laughs> Like the whole time, you're just like, wait, what? What? Huh? <laughs> like, why is Michelle Williams still in the fucking movie? Like, I don't know. I have no idea. 
Like it's great. Yeah. And then and then Venom's like, I love her. We need to get her back. Kiss her, Eddie. Like, Start <laughs> crying now. She'll love it. <laughs> cry. <laughs> just fucking it's making fucking, him cry. It fucking rocks. Like it. Fuck, I love, I, like it's so stupid. He rides it on his like regular motorcycle, and then he breaks the big story. And to show that he is now popular again, he's on a better motorcycle in the next cut. Like it's so dumb. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really dumb, but it, like highly enjoyable. And again, like over in like. 80 minutes like this fucking thing like i i actually do i i sometimes when i come over to gogs's house to watch movies i do laundry this movie was over before like my laundry was even done <laughs> like that's how fast this movie is like uh anyway uh let's get into our feature presention uh draft day the a i'm gonna go like i, gonna go I fucking demanded we watch as a joke and turned yes. out to love this is the most shocking movie we've watched this year. I legitimately dreaded watching this movie. Like, I legitimately walked into this like yeah. I was going to death row. I was like, fuck. I thought about calling out this week because I was like, I don't want to watch Draft Day. <laughs> but it's lo and be behold. Hard, I think for us, because I think we're all, especially me, TJ, and Alec, I think Gogs to like a degree, but maybe not as much, are very soft on sports movies. Like it's compared soft in to general. other movies, yeah, fair. I love sports movies. Yeah, I feel <laughs> like I love procedurals, and that's what this is. Well, this is like an adult drama too, which is not something that's like usually my wheelhouse when it comes to movies. You know what I mean? Like it's just like a talking drama, like an Aaron Sorkin, but not. And as... And I, I will throw this out there before we get into the actual script. They do something that I fucking hate through this whole movie, but like I still like what, the movie. Cast Jennifer Garner. No, she's oh. fine. She's actually <laughs> alright in the movie. She's okay, no, yeah. I the movie is nothing but phone conversations, right? So Ivan Reichman was like, How do I make this more dynamic? Oh, so God, he did with the, the fucking, fucking like it felt the like Ang, panels. Ang, Thank you. Yes. <laughs> that is exactly what I said to God. I was like, Ang Wee's draft day. We're like and, and for those of you at home, what I'm trying to say is they do like a split screen, but they do in plenty of movies when there's a phone conversation. But they do this thing where they like one of the people will break the plane of the split screen and like Fucking it's like, so that. weird yeah. and it's like it, it's awful. Anyway, Alec, what happened in this movie? Me? Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh. Uh. oh fuck! I gotta put that on my big sandwich now. <laughs> the Cle- the Cleveland Browns. Yet again, have a draft full of hope, which <laughs> will un- ultimately lead them down the same road they always go down, which is failure. <laughs> that is true. I feel bad for Vontae Mack. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Did anyone did, wanted... did anyone know that he was in that movie? Did no, you know and it, it kind could... of it broke me up as soon as I saw him. I was like, oh yeah. fuck. And him in this case, if you don't know, is Chadwick Boseman, who is great in the movie. Did like, you know again. he was in it, Alec? I knew, I don't know, I think I looked, I saw it last week, maybe. I wasn't surprised when I saw him in the movie. I think I might have seen it on IMDb or something when I looked last week. Mm. He's very, me, he's me very and he legitimately man. popped. We're like, oh, shit. Yeah. I'm sorry, continue. And uh, Terry Crews and Arian Foster. Mm-hmm. Apparently. There's a huge cast in this movie. Like, Arian this Foster is a lot who is the best rapper of any athlete in history. I think I played some of this shit for Gogs. Like, he's actually oh, yeah, really right. good. Uh, um, like, every person in the NFL, including Roger Goodell. This well, is like it's the NFL, like, NFL movie. This, like, cast, I don't know how you guys feel about it, is full of people I genuinely do not like. Like, like usually I don't care for Jennifer Gardner. I hate Dennis Leary. Like, yeah. I think our feelings on Kevin Costner uh, prior to this movie are pretty well established. Yeah, but they're all pretty good in yeah. this. Dennis Leary Frank is Frank Langell is a dick. Oh, I like mm. Frank Langell. Yeah. Come on now. People pay to get wet. <laughs> also, one of the greatest lines in movie history, I've been stepping on my dick all day. <laughs> it's like, Not what as is good as Gogs' screen cap of, uh, I fired my dad and gave it to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I almost I almost had a heart attack when we watched that together. I was That's dying so- uh, at that. <laughs> Uh, the, oh, all right. I'm sorry, Alec. Go ahead. Sorry. All right. So, I believe it opens up with just a montage of the Cleveland Browns or some bullshit about their storied history, and then we zero in on Kevin Costner and his soon-to-be baby mama. She decides to tell him 
like three days after his dad died on draft day of the NFL, like his biggest day of the year, that she's pregnant. And at this point, they're not like a couple. He's just like banging his assistant. No, yeah. because if you were watching the movie before she starts talking, you would assume she is his daughter. Correct. Yeah, yeah. And everyone yes. will always assume that for the rest of their relationship. It turns out she's just the, the Cleveland Browns capologist. God's yeah. looked mm. this up. She's she was seventeen years younger than him. Or yeah, she like still that. is. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. like it's creepy. Like when when it's, later it's on good. in the movie, <laughs> later on in the movie when what's her name? Ellen Burstyn is that her name? Burstyn. Yeah. Burstyn. When she's introduced as Kevin Costner's mom, her as a love interest <laughs> made more sense to me than Jennifer. Yeah, even Garner. Roseanne Arquette. It's like mm, maybe, maybe, yeah. <laughs> Um, then Kevin Costner starts going off on her like this is the biggest day of my career and blah 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 well, how, <laughs> why would you say this to me now blah 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 blah, blah. Uh, he gets to the office uh, and he gets a call from the Seahawks who want to give him the number one pick for his or no before he leaves his house he gets the call that they want to give him the number one pick for two ones the next two years and the third. Then he gets to the office and calls him back, and now it's three number ones. And like an idiot, he which makes is the insane. Trade. Yeah, that is that's like Sean McVay levels of not giving a fuck about <laughs> draft picks. Like the Rams yeah. don't have a draft pick till like twenty thirty, the first round <laughs> pick because they just keep trading them for old dudes that just can't play anymore. Mm-hmm. Um. But he he makes the deal because he wants to make a splash, and he gets the number one overall pick for <clears throat> what's the number one overall pick in this in this year. The the highest rated player is a uh, Bo Callahan. Bo Callahan, quarterback out of uh, Wisconsin. He's the number one prospect. But Cleveland doesn't necessarily need a quarterback. Because they got a quarterback that's coming back from injury that is really good for them. Um, yeah, and they say that uh, Bo is the best quarterback uh, prospect since Andrew Luck, which is like made me think of Trevor Lawrence immediately. Yeah, I would also I, like I, Andrew Luck was like, I might be wrong, but like two years before that. Yeah, yeah, it was like it's yeah. not like it's not like when people used to say, "Oh, the best prospect since Elway," which is like yeah. 25, 30 years ago. Andrew Luck was drafted like 2012, like two years before this movie took place. I have a question. Did they ever establish what – they said this is Kevin Costner's like second draft, right? Did they ever say what he did before that? He was an assistant GM in San Francisco, I think, there because when he's talking about I drafted you, and he's like, no, you didn't, you're dead. He's like, I was in San Francisco, but I called my dad. He had never even heard of you. Okay. I, I think they're supposed to be like the Shanahans almost. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. yeah no, mm. Thanks. Um, I got to pee. Keep going. So Kevin, Kevin, or uh, Sonny Weaver makes the makes the trade, gets the first overall pick for his uh, number seven pick, seven, and then yeah. his first round picks the next two years, which is fucking like insane. Yeah. Um. Because what you was know they reference the NFL draft and draft capital and stuff like that, like. A first round pick would usually would probably go for maybe two ones or a one and a couple of twos. Like, I don't know. Yeah, because I think they, they referenced the RG3 trade, and I don't think that wasn't three ones, right? It was like two ones and like other picks. Yeah. But he doesn't want to do it. He gets pressured into it by no, his, he wants his vampire boss, Frank Langella. Yeah, he wants linebacker from Ohio State, Vontae Mack. Like, th- that's who he wants at seven. Correct. So, um, sorry, turnover. No, yeah. shit. Okay. No, a good one. Oh, good. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, and then Frank Langell is thrilled that he made the trade to get the quarterback, even though they don't really need one. Dennis Leary's pissed he made the trade because Dennis Leary wants to keep his quarterback, and he wants a stud running back who can do everything. Which that's how really, his offense runs. 
Yeah, and it really kind of dates the movie because, like, it, besides the Giants, who's used a first round pick on a running back in the last like ten years. Yeah, like there's maybe one a year now. Yeah, where ten years ago it was like half the first round was running backs, uh, but you can get those guys anywhere now. Yeah. Um. So then there's just a lot. There's a lot of drama between him, between Sonny Weaver. And Dennis Leary, I forget the coach's name, the coach, about who to take with the number one pick overall now. Because Penn, I think. I'm sorry? I think the coach's name was, I think uh, Leary's name is Penn, Coach Penn. Yeah, yeah it doesn't he, really matter. He, he was, he's, he, a, he's, a, he's a coach. He's a coach who came in from the Cowboys after winning a Super Bowl with the Cowboys. Um, yeah, yeah so they implied clearly, that he's like clearly a, a fictional movie. <laughs> they well no they imply that he's like Barry Switzer a guy that came in on the tail end of a dynasty won a championship and then ran it into the ground uh, yeah yeah I I kind of I thought that he might be like a Gruden too because he did similar things yeah you know what I mean like he won a he won a championship with somebody else's team and then never really did much after yeah and he, he yeah, I thought he was I, just the, in the the look of how he looked he's in I the assumed movie it was yeah I assumed it was a Gruden yeah um. But the uh, most of the movie is the drama between them, and then Kevin Costner calls back the Seahawks and says, "Look, you already made the trade. You fleeced me. Why did you make the trade? Why didn't you want him when you need a quarterback?" And I think they basically tell him, "Like, oh, well, go look at the tape, or go look at this, or whatever." And then he calls. Oh, no, Monty, he hangs he up on him. Monty. Remember. He's like, uh, because they're like burning him in effigy outside the office. Oh, like, yeah. yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> He's like, does that, does that look like me? Yeah. yeah that kinda. guy, the guy that's the, the GM for Seattle, that guy looks super familiar. Like, I feel like that guy's been in a ton of shit, and I could not, like, place where I knew him from. Well, the assistant GM's Chi McBride, right? Right. No, yeah. I knew him. I know him. Yeah. yeah. The other guy, though, the white guy. I, I feel yeah, like he's been I, in a ton I, I of don't. shit. I don't know his name. Um, meanwhile, Kevin Costner is fielding calls from other teams for players and for the and for the number one pick to get it from them. Um, he calls Vontae Max as we got the number one pick, and Max like, "Well, you're not taking me then," and gets pissed and tells him to go watch the tape from the Wisconsin Ohio State game. Watch, watch Bo Cunningham after I hit him every time. And eventually they do, and they realize that he's a wimp. Yeah, and that he's people a, don't like him. Real man. It's yeah. like a, this is a very weird. Like I think they don't. They don't. They ultimately this, they don't this draft is, him because no one likes him and didn't well, go. This well, is what I was saying party. about like them being able to get access. Like they can't be real. Like how it really is with these draft picks. It's like, oh yeah, he raped like three women and they covered it up. They can't say that because they need the <laughs> yeah. NFL to sign off on it. So they have to make it like. Oh, you know, he uh he's a big fibber, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> right, right. Well, they kind of allude to it with Arian Foster's character, right? When they talk about the fight he got into. But it's and, so like he kept non- some men. Oh, yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you're and right. also Arian Foster's black, so they can say that. But this guy's <laughs> yeah. white, so they just have to make it that like he didn't see a hundred dollars one time. Yeah. Yeah, he, he lied about a hundred bucks. Yeah, and his teammates also, wouldn't go to his birthday party. Yeah, which also that hundred dollar story seems so fucking fake. Like he's the only person well, that did, did, did that. Like, did you remember fucking... the Jamarcus Russell story? Have you heard that one where they gave him the DVD yes, of all yes, the plays? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. And he's like, "Yeah, I watched it." He's like, "What was your favorite?" He's like, "I liked all of them." And they had given him a blank DVD on purpose. Yeah, yeah. Well, that guy rocked. <laughs> that guy showed up. That guy showed up to training purple camp drink. like. Yeah, yeah, he showed up to training camp like 150 pounds overweight. Like, Based. That guy ruled. <laughs> um, Sonny gets a call from the Bills inquiring about the number one pick, and they want to give him, like, their one plus a couple of players. Yeah, the first Hispanic running back in NFL history. The guy's name was, like, Javier Rodrigo or some shit. Yeah, and... uh <laughs> So Sonny pulls the coach aside and rips him a new asshole for going behind his back, trying to influence other teams to make trades with him. 
Um, like really, for the most part, this movie didn't really engage me until really okay. the actual draft started. Like I, I was kind of bored with a lot of it until the actual draft night started and like the deals behind the scenes and all that shit started going on. Yeah, that was. Um, fun. We get to the actual draft and he takes uh, he keeps the number one pick and he takes Vontae Mack, uh, Chadwick Boseman's and, character. <laughs> and Frank Langella flies back to execute him. <laughs> yeah, Frank Langella flies back. To- Guys, guys, please. Please. Yeah. He flies back from from New York City to Cleveland before the, the fifth pick is made in the draft. <laughs> like he does it in a matter of like he leaves downtown New York, goes to an airport in New Jersey, presumably unless he lands on the practice field named after uh, his, Kevin Costner's dead dad. He fucking gets and he teleports there in like less than thirty five. Well, what minutes. you didn't know that Frank Langella hired well, Nightcrawler. In, I was gonna like, say he's in, also Frank Langella, some kind of time lord because he's dressed like Morpheus the whole time and like yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I feel like he's like the lord of a drug cartel that happened to buy a football team because like his business is not explained at all, which I guess oh, he's is a fine. Water park tycoon. He owns, oh, he owns right. yeah, water yeah. parks. Yeah, but that's got to be a front, right? Look how he's dressed. Yeah, yeah, the drip don't quit. That shit no. is hilarious that he gets there so fast. Like, that shit was like, what? Wait, well, I don't what? know, man. Do you ever watch the NFL draft? That first <laughs> round, like, each pick takes, like, forever. Yeah, I, I actually, I was talking about this with Goggs. I love football. You all know that I love football. I, I spent the whole day today watching football. And my team's not even playing until tomorrow. Some but of us are watching it right now. <laughs> I, I'm actually watching it on my phone. Yeah. But, uh... I never watch the draft. I find the draft insanely boring. I I don't follow college football, so like I don't know any of these players. And Can like, you I imagine get a- being one of the lunatics that watches the combine. Oh my god! I I was at a bar one time and they had it on, and I was like, "Are am I like in hell? What is going? What is this?" Like, I we're, and we're I asked him to turn to exercise. Yeah, and it's like, I, or like I said this to guys while you're watching it, but like. People go to the draft like live. They have like tickets to yeah. go to the like so they what can the scream. They can, so they can basically so they can boo. Yeah, yeah. I, I always think about uh, what was that fucking psycho's name? He's like his his name was like Pussy Eater four twenty or something. He's a big Eagles fan. Oh, the 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 fucking pedophile guy. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, Sean. eat that pussy three four five. I believe yeah, the guy's yeah, yeah. name is. So, like, there's a video of him freaking out that they drafted Jalen Hurts. He's like, this is the worst thing the Eagles have ever done. <laughs> like, all this shit. It's like, yeah. Wasn't he, like, a third-round pick? Yeah, he's like, he's all right. He's pretty yeah, yeah, he wasn't even – he didn't even go with the first. They lost to the yeah. Giants today. That was funny. But, uh, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, the, the draft bores me to, to tears. I, I can't imagine watching the draft. And, I again, I love football. You know – when Washington signed RG3, I heard about it the next day. Well, that it's just like exciting. watching a bunch of like meek young men get hired. Like it's not that exciting. But like, I will this, say, no. in, in the video game, when you play in franchise mode, the draft is fun. Yeah, well, like, somehow, I do. Like, I do. Somehow like I ended up watching the draft when Geno Smith kept falling from grace, and every time they cut back to him, like at well, his I think table, they I referenced would... that in this movie they specifically. Did, yeah. They, yeah. Like, it's the remember, only draft I've ever watched. I remember when Brady Quinn was, like, the hot lick, and he kept getting, every time they cut to him, like, at every the pick, they, they, it was so fucking funny. Oh, well, they were you, right. Yeah, yeah I mean, you watch so, an hour of Mel Kuyper's, like, terrible draft takes. How that guy's become, like, a multi-millionaire, I'll never figure of, out. Sean and I watch a lot of uh, football YouTube, and one of the like in-depth people talked. Th- I think you've seen it, Sean, the Mel Kiper video about how he's always been wrong about everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Continue. So now we get to actual draft night. He drafts Vontae Mack first, and then the which is few- absurd, by the way, to draft a fucking outside linebacker first overall pick. It's like the most the absurd Redskins thing. did it like last year with the second pick. How Hello? is it that much? Chase, well, not, Chase, Chase Young was a number two pick. Li- he's also he's not a, an outside he's an linebacker. He's an edge rusher. Like, I mean, come on. You're thing. splitting hairs. Uh, all right. No, an outside linebacker and a defensive end is not the same thing. Well, no, it's it's insane to trade up three, you know, <laughs> your three first-round picks and draft, a, like, a defensive player that's not Deion Sanders. Like, I get that. But what was the RG3 deal, TJ? What were the picks involved? Oh. Do you remember? 
it was very close to this deal. It was, it was, uh, I think it was, it was at least two first, right? I think it was three firsts. I think it was three firsts and maybe one second. It, it was a lot. It was a, it was a, it was a boatload that they, that they did. I think it was, it was three and two, if I remember correctly, but it's been Oof. a while. So it was a lot. Oh, wow. And you know, not for nothing. It worked out the first year. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not the fucking GM's fault. Well, I guess it is the GM's fault that they destroyed that kid's leg. I still feel bad about that. That's still yeah. like one of those like what it like I don't I don't like I mean RG three is who he is. I don't have a problem with that as a person, but I really feel like they did him dirty. Well RG three so was the, like the, the, the Reds, biggest victim. <laughs> Go ahead. The Redskins got the number two overall pick. The Rams got the sixth overall pick. The thirty ninth overall pick, the twenty second overall pick the next year, and the number two overall pick the year after that. Oof. So they traded our. They got one first rounder, gave up three firsts and a second. Jesus Christ! And one of those was... picks was Janoris Jenkins, who was a stud. Yeah, one of those yeah. picks was Greg Robinson, who is a stud. Like, yeah, man, that yeah. sucks. <laughs> <laughs> the narrative around RG3 in DC, though, was, like, so racist. I remember because I was working uh, in DC at the time, and you, like, listen to the fan. It's like, well, they took RG3. He's not, like, he's not, like, a student of the game. It's like, that guy was majoring in law or, like, pre-law at Baylor. It was and then he, it was the fucking worst. I remember I, he got married, and they registered at Target, and, like, somehow his registry got out. It's like, how dare he register his wedding? Like, it's like, Jesus Christ, give this kid a break. Oh, I'll, like, I'll do you one Just because you're I, rich doesn't mean, like... It's your wedding. Like, people yeah. want to get you shit. Right. And also, they're like, registered yeah. for like towels and shit. Yeah. It's not also, like you registered at like Crate and Barrel or someplace <laughs> actually really expensive. Tesla. Yeah. yeah. I remember when he was rehabbing, and this, it was the year after he got hurt and he was coming back, and he was rehabbing, and he was posting like stories on his Instagram of like working out, and people were like, oh, why is he all about himself? It's like, Oh my god, dude! Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, he's working out. Like, also, you... it's Instagram. What yeah. are you supposed to put up there? <laughs> like... I, 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 uh, I actually stopped listening to local sports radio around the RG three time. I just couldn't take it anymore. It was just too much. I listen to, I listen to like sports podcasts now, but I don't listen to local shit. It's, it's yeah. the worst. Uh, anyway, sorry. <sighs> Football, the podcast, um, everybody. So they make they make <laughs> the Browns make their first pick, um, and then like three more picks go by, and they realize, oh shit, nobody's taking uh, your boy, whatever his name was. Yeah, uh, have we mentioned like that? Uh, have we mentioned that Bo Callahan's agent is uh, P Diddy? Because <laughs> that's just yeah, cracked that's up. Some puppy combs. But I, I did like this part of it because, like, I, we've all seen this in sports where, like, some somebody sniffs something's wrong and everybody panics. So everybody just, like, bails oh, yeah. on this kid immediately when he doesn't go number one. That is true. Yeah, that happened to Laramie Tunsil because he yeah. smoked weed. Oh, yeah, God forbid. I mean, he had that ridiculous, like... My dad has that same uh, gas mask bong, by the way, that he has in that Snapchat. <laughs> That's awesome. That rocks. Um... <laughs> This is the sloppiest game I've ever seen in my life, so, by the way. This game fucking sucks. <laughs> well, the Ravens uh, just got so it back. The, uh, well, maybe you're ahead of me because. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Good. Um, well, I'm in a different time zone. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> it's, it's, it's nine, he doesn't it's, know that. <laughs> it's 1045 there. <laughs> um, the quarterback starts dropping. Kevin Costner goes, "Oh my god, I'm going to look at the, like the biggest dick ever because I just gave away, I just gave away three firsts for a dude that I didn't take, and now the guy I traded with is going to get this guy he wanted anyway, like at the seventh pick, which is insane." Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that's how it starts going. So who does he call? The GM of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah, the second, we get, a, the second we get a, a delightful cameo in the NFL. We get a delightful cameo from the guy from Cheap Thrills and Ghost World. That's like I love this guy. actor. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah I, I forget. Like, I forget his yeah. name, but he's a great actor. I was so happy to see him show up. He's he's not awesome. Ethan Embry. What's I forget. He's what his not. Name he's not Andrew Daly, yeah. basically. 
yeah, I can't remember his name, but he's uh he's great. He's the lead in Cheap Thrills. Um, he's, he's a fantastic actor. So, so he goes. Kevin Costner gives up. So he already gave up his fir- his first round picks. People who don't watch sports are not going to give a fuck about any of this. No. when they listen, but well, he Matt gave up his, his, his first round picks for three years to get the number one pick, who he then drafted an outside linebacker. His name is Pat Healy, by the way. Yeah, the guy that he would have got um, at seven, seven because nobody yeah. wanted to take him. That was kind of like uh, the whole crux of why Vontae Mack keeps calling him because he's like, I need to go above the teens because I'm trying to get that next salary structure. Nobody's going to take me until later in the first round, if at all. Yeah, like they were saying he might drop out. Yeah. Um, the uh, he, he calls the Jags and he trades to get their – first round number six pick he gives up his second round picks for the next three years so if this does if this doesn't work out for him like he's fucking done like he's yeah. just, he is fired he's, it's like, he, might, he might already be fired when skeletor shows back up but <laughs> as of yet he is not um so basically he's given up six draft picks to get two picks and so far, all he's drafted an outside linebacker that he could have got later anyway, <laughs> yeah, right. with, if he hadn't done anything initially. But then, genius s- s- savant that he is, he calls Seattle, says, I got the sixth pick, and I'm going to take the quarterback, and you're going to look like a fucking asshole unless you trade up with me right now and give me all my firsts back. Which, after some deliberation... uh and conjecture, Seattle blinks, and they give him his picks back, and they get, get the kick uh, returner. plus a punt returner. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they, yeah, and they get a, a special teams player. Uh, I did like that. He's like, "Fine, you can have your picks back." And he's like, "Hold, please." <laughs> yeah, what yeah, else I like that. That was. Yeah. Have, you, have, you no, seen money? have you guys seen? Money yeah, that's, I was going to bring that up I'm not, when I was doing my review. Yeah, there's like the exact the exact same scene almost in Moneyball, and Moneyball is a much better movie than this. Like, correct. But Moneyball, like, he's like, uh, Brad Pitt is like making a deal, and he makes the, he makes the deal, and the guy agrees to it, and then he just is like, hold on, mutes the phone, looks over at Jonah Hill, he's like, what else do we want? Jonah Hill just starts going up and down a list, like, uh, Rodriguez. They throw in Rodriguez too. Yeah, it's much better done in Moneyball, I, I, but it's still effective, and it's still effective in this. I remember the name of the kick returner. His name is David Putney, and I remember that because it's a name no yeah. one actually has in real life. <laughs> Should be David Puntney. Oh shit! Mm. They blew it. They, they did blow it. it. Well, they also like. I think they bring up too that like part of the reason they're willing to make this trade back is because they get the pick, and because the number one picks in a different salary strata than the number seven, that they can beat their cap problem that they would have. Yeah, they, they kind of worked one. out for them actually yeah. in a weird way. I was trying to think when they did this. Like this wasn't so long ago that it was because like Matt. Was it Matt Stafford? Was he the last of the like huge first round pick contracts? I believe so. Yeah. And then so, they re then the the C- new CBA like slashed all that. Yeah. Like they still make millions and millions, but it's not like yeah, yeah seven like years, hundred yeah. millions like that were there before. Um. Yeah. It uh. So he makes the trade. Gets his gets his. Dudes back, <laughs> Give my dudes. and his, and his, his future Give my dudes. dudes, his future <laughs> dudes back too. Um, so and I'm I'm and, dumb uh, about this. Like Alec, give me some perspective. Like, so he got out of the deal. He got two first rounders, and at and the end of the day, only nets out losing is the second rounder this year, next year, and the year after. Is that like a net? Is that not really? Is that it's still not, bad? I mean, I don't Juju? know. They have it's still I would consider it a loss, I would think. Yeah, a second but round I don't pick know. in football I mean, is way more valuable than like any other sports draft. But I don't know. You also got uh it depends on if the players work out. Right. If Yeah, that is a part of the movie that they never really exp- like If Vontae Mack and the running yeah. back work out, then absolutely it's a steal. Because NFL I mean, I think next to baseball, NFL picks are harder to predict than anybody. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, like uh, as like a common real world example, the Lakers traded away basically all of their young core to get Anthony Davis, and they won a championship. So nobody gives a shit that they're not going to be good for the next ten years. Right. Mm. Yeah. They were, and then this year they did the same thing to get Russell Westbrook, and they look terrible. Yeah. Like they just keep like pushing the pushing the payback down the line. Yeah. Um. Well, I mean, you can look at the Rams. They do that shit too, or they like. Fucking... Yeah, he said that earlier. Yeah, yeah. I think I you mean... were in, you were pissed. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, but the, the Rams, Rams, the Rams, yeah. they just keep doing that over and over. They just keep but they're trading fucking, all their picks. They're good. Get... You know what I mean? Like they're they're. But a at some point, like... at some point, that salary is gonna like yeah. Oh, yeah. wipe them out yeah. for I mean, years. Jalen Ramsey sure... is probably making more now than the entire Jaguars roster is. <laughs> You're probably right. Yeah. It's and like McVeigh's probably like I'm either gonna win a Super Bowl or get fired, so I don't give a shit. Yeah. Like it's all gonna be wiped out. It's all gonna get wiped out, and it's gonna be like a, a wasteland in. In the LA Rams, yeah. but I'm not going to be here. It's not, not I mean, my problem. The drafts yeah. have been weird of the last few years anyway, because like it used to be if you took a quarterback number one, you were stuck with that asshole for at least like five or six years. But now, like the Cardinals took two yeah. quarterbacks like within what three years, or was it back to back? Yeah, in the first they round. Took Ro- they took Rosen one year <laughs> and then they traded yeah. Josh with Tyler Rosen. Murray the next year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, it's it's like Washington. They took RG three, and they took Kirk Cousins in the same fucking draft. It, it's weird. Shit's weird now. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's about it for the movie. They end up drafting the running back at number six or seven. So, now, so what's his name? Dan Leary's so, happy. Yeah, because yeah. Terry Terry Crews' son, Terry Crews, is his dad. Yeah, um, Cruz is a former. He's like he's like Cleveland Browns royalty or something. Yeah, he's like, like he's a like, fucking yeah. Ernest, Ernest Biner or Ozzy oh, yeah. or somebody. Which like I feel like they should have picked could have picked an actor a little older because Terry Crews. I don't know how old he is, but he does not look like somebody who's been like retired gotten, from football yeah, and right. has a football age son yet. No, he looks like he could still name? play uh, now. Fred Fred Williamson or whatever. oh yeah, that would have been cool. Uh, I don't Can know. We, He's probably too when old. This movie, when this movie came out, he was 48. Can we all agree that this is like the worst coda in the history of movies when all the Bre- like Bernie Kosar and Jim Brown show up and then it's like the <laughs> fucking like telling, in the I tunnel. I was telling Gogs, I didn't know what Bernie Kosar looked like, but then when he's like, thanks, Bernie, I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. that's Bernie Kosar. Because like, it's the only that's notable, Sanders. notable fucking Browns that I even know. Like, it would have been funny they, if it was, if this movie, uh oh, we lost Gogs. Uh, does that mean we're still recording? Uh oh. It looks like we are. Is everybody else still here? Yeah, yeah. Here. The red, the red record thing is still on. What happened? No, he was. I had the wrong button under the weight of uh, all the football knowledge. No, yeah, I that was, was saying it. that this movie should have been made in 2021 because we could have had the ghost of Jim Thorne that would have showed up. Or Jim, Jim Thorpe. 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 Yeah, Thorpe. No, they should, they should have had like Ty Detmer and <laughs> Webster Slaughter and Kellen Tim Winslow Couch. Jr. Yeah. <laughs> Tim, like, good lord. Fucking Derek Anderson for that one year that they Derek were good. Derek Anderson, holy fuck. Oh my god. All right, right, yeah. All the quarterbacks that the Browns have had. And just shitty Ooh. players in general, yeah. Because there's a one scene where they like walk by in like Kevin Costner's weird like out of place space mansion. Oh, with the with the pictures? Is that what we're talking about? No. No, go ahead. Please, no, we're talking about the end in the owner's box when all the other the Browns, yeah, when quote, Anakin and Obi Wan and show up at the fucking <laughs> one, one of them is a legend, and <laughs> the rest of them are just former Browns. Yeah, because oh, I was telling TJ at some point, like right after that, Jennifer Garner drops the "I'm pregnant" bomb on him. He walks by this like array of photographs. It's like a six by six. I'm like, that's all the starting quarterbacks they've had in the last. Two he, had years. The, he had the weirdest fucking artwork in his fucking mansion I've ever seen. Like that, this... it looks like an Eon Musk fuck palace too. <laughs> yeah, like, that well, no, it, was, it was still more grounded than a uh, Cameron Diaz house in any given Sunday. <laughs> that is true. Also like the opening shot of like, uh, Kevin Costner, like, getting out of bed and then there was like a nude woman in the shower was like so like wait what what is that why and then, then obviously not gays 
it's Jennifer Garner, but it was just like, yeah. why did you feel the need to shoot that? And then like, I don't know if anybody stuck around for the the stills during the credit or the the credits where it was just random football players. Yeah, like, hey, it football was like man. Larry Fitzgerald. It like, was the <laughs> worst song I've ever heard in my entire <laughs> life. It was like a Coast Guard joining anthem or something. Like, yeah, I'm gonna fight with my brothers and fight forever. Touchdown! Like it was so bad. <laughs> Uh, all right. So what else do you want to talk about this movie? I I'd like to point out, uh, I don't know. Again, I took a leak. So you might've mentioned this when they review the, the tape, when, when, uh, when, when he tells him, Hey, look at the tape. When I sacked, what's his name? Like five times, the footage that they shot of like a football game is really well done. Yeah, like it yeah. looks like a real game. Like I know that sounds like a dumb thing to compliment. Well, we but, saw like, any they given did... Sunday, right? Yeah. That's the thing. They yeah. did like an. They, it looked like an illegitimate football game. They did an amazing job. Like the whoever the line budget in this movie must have been insane because you have to get all the NFL shit. You got to get all those players in there. You got to get the University of Wisconsin. You got to get Ohio State, and like you have to license yeah. all that with the schools individually. You yeah, know what I mean? Fortunate. Like. Well, yeah, and every time they went to a city, which I thought was fucking hilarious, they did oh, like they the, fucking, the team font. Yeah, they did the fucking uh, what's the fucking the Marvel thing where they're like fucking Cleveland, but then they like they're like the home of the Browns, like they should have done city. The, the, the fucking CIA operative font where it types it in, like yeah, <laughs> yeah. it was fucking hilarious. Like I loved yeah. it so much. Like that, that's gonna get into like I'll get into it with my five knuckle shuffles, but like. I, I, there's so many parts of this movie that are just like, what? Why would you choose to do that? But guess, it's awesome. Well, guess I, what the budget what? was on this movie? Uh, seventy-four. TJ, uh, I'm gonna go low. I'm gonna go fifty. Fifty-five. Alec, oh, is it fifty or fifty-five? Fifty-five. Uh, sixty-three. Twenty-five. Damn. Jesus. I think that the NFL volunteered a lot of this shit. Oh my god, Joe Burrow's wearing like the jacket from Drive in his press conference. It's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> uh, well, they annihilated the Steelers. Bro, today. Those color rush uniforms they're wearing today were dripping like the oh, yeah, orange yeah. tops of the orange pants. Anyway. Big fan. Uh, no, Alec brought up Moneyball earlier, and he's right. This is a much better... Moneyball's a much Moneyball's better version good. of this movie. Yeah. But... Like, I think they, and I, I think I texted one of you guys this offline, or maybe all of you, like, all the shit I don't like in this movie feels like they added it because of shit like Moneyball. Because if you've ever read Moneyball the book, it's, like, super dry. Like, yeah, it's a yeah. lot of, like, nerd shit, like, which I would have appreciated, but I, I can see why it's not in the movie. But it feels like they added, like, the love shit and the thing with his dad, because that doesn't really go anywhere other than the, like, no. people are like, hey, yeah, your dad died, you dick. But it's, like, it's died because you fired him. Shit is yeah. so fucking funny. They're like, well, you fired your dad. Now he's dead. Way to go. You killed your dad. Yeah. yeah <laughs> there's, but like, a scene, there's a scene where his mom is just sitting on like the 30 yard line, just standing outside of his office for some where reason. Where she drags the whole organization out there <laughs> and the ashes, which is it's, kind yeah, of funny. She's but flying like, a cart in the dark. But, but the fact that his so dad died doesn't really inform the character at all. You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, my dad wanted to win, and now I want to win. But it doesn't really amount to anything. Like, it would almost be better if Dennis Leary was his dad and they were fighting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, Gog said it while we watched the movie, and he's spot on. Because a lot of the motivation of Kevin Costner is like, I never got to see my team win or whatever. Yeah. It's like, well, that motivation seems more apt because we looked up what a, uh, like the average salary of a GM is. And it's like $2 million. Shocker. It's very, it's, it's cushy. <laughs> yeah. It's what about Dennis Leary's absurd, like fucking like starting tight end salary he's making where he's making like 30 million, million over dollars. six years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. the thing is like this, this movie makes more sense. If Kevin Costner is like a head coach, like, I don't know. Like, it seems weird that like the pinnacle of the movie is the GM. Like it's hard to feel sympathetic for someone in that position. Yeah, like it's very strange. Like I love it's the also movie. like it kind of needs say. to be yeah, it kind of needs to be like he's on his last legs, Cleveland's his last stop. They really should have like leaned into like the Browns being a poverty franchise, which I'm sure they couldn't because the NFL would be like, no, everything's or make cool it like Saw, like if the draft doesn't go well, they take his feet. <laughs> 
Well, that's certainly a way to go See, about it. But Sean, like you said earlier, that this is a blacklist script. I bet yeah. that was probably in the original script. I'm sure. They, yeah, they probably took a lot of that shit out because of the NFL. Like, if this is only thirty million, Goggs is right. The NFL probably gave all that shit to this yeah. movie. Because you remember that you know, sh- that show on ESPN, Playmakers, where it was about a yeah. football team that was like. <laughs> Yeah, and the was, NFL was like, hey, you're going to cancel this show or you're not going to show football on here anymore. Those are your yeah. options. They're like, yeah. Yeah, yeah it is that a very sanitized. Ridiculous. Yeah. But it's Every like, player was on drugs. It was it was the NFL Blitz the League, the show. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, we all remember, like, you know, real draft controversies like when Joe Mixon got filmed punching his girlfriend out at a restaurant in Oklahoma. You know what I mean? Like shit oh, like yeah. Johnny Manziel is doing cocaine nonstop. Like, yeah. you know, this is like, oh, this guy lied and this guy got in some kind of vague argument. And then this yeah. guy has a brass knuckle cell phone, which where did he get that? Because it's awesome. But like, yeah. he, also had, he also had a, uh, a like the revolver chamber uh, wristwatch, which I yeah. thought was very cool. It's a very like safe uh, portrayal yeah. of the NFL. I, I think you said it earlier. <coughs> uh, sanitized is, is yeah. the right way to say it. Like, absolutely. Uh, it is It is the cleanest version of the NFL. Like, ultimately, they pass on this guy because he doesn't have any friends. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. what? <laughs> like, so like, we weird. can't trap this guy. He's a fucking loser. He's, He's a, a dork. dork. <laughs> <laughs> we can't... Uh, like, it, it should have been like they needed like a, a like a millennial cut of this where it's like we can't we can't fuck we can't he's draft so this guy he's got, zero, he's got zero hose like yeah. he's got no this hose. guy yeah. is he's super, cringe he's super sus we he's, can't he's, got a, he's got a forty inch vertical and zero bitches <laughs> <laughs> oh all right let's get into five knuckle shuffles uh, <laughs> this is going to be very interesting to me yeah. Uh, Gogs. I, an eight, I think. Like, <laughs> like, I really, like, I, like, against, against all better judgment, I found myself, like, when I wasn't just, like, riffing on it with TJ, like, I was engaged, I was not bored, I was, like, Stuff was ludicrous, but, like, all the procedural NFL stuff was very interesting, even for me who, like, within the confines of the cast of this show, I'm the least educated in all things sports. And I was, like, because I was talking to TJ, I was, like, it's why we like Shin Godzilla. It's, like, why we like any of these movies that are just, like, (laughs) people. You're not wrong. Like, we like, I like procedurals. Like, I like just seeing how the sausage is made. And, like, this was this was engaging and interesting. And like all the way, the moves all, sh- I was trying to figure out how all the moves would shake out in the end so that this could somehow be victorious. And it worked out and Kevin Costner's not bad in it. And like, it's lunacy and it's about the Browns. and It's about their draft day. But I was like, I walked into I mean, this. You're, you're definitely right. Because it seems like the whole, uh, um, conflict of the movie is going to be is he going to make this trade but he makes the trade in the first 10 minutes right and i'm like then what now what like yeah. where does this go like and then and then it becomes like a police investigation and then it becomes like this weird struggle for power and then it's i don't know like and it, what it, does it, the green piece of paper say that he's had think, i was hoping it was a dick butt the entire time and no it was just uh, take Vontae mac the gogs, I, you don't know how funny that comment actually is well, why? Because I, I posted the fucking the Vontae Mag no matter what on Facebook, and TJ responded with a picture of a dick butt I, on the I same sent it piece to of paper. Too. I oh, said, okay, yeah, never mind. Yeah, yeah. But I, I said that during the thing. I was like, like, oh, I was like, I was like, please be just a dick butt. Like, or, or it was like no that thing what. from, the, like the thing from like uh, the Big Lebowski where he traces over. It's just a guy <laughs> yeah, with his yeah. owner. But yeah, no, like, I, I don't know. Yeah, fucking, I fucking forgot I, about that. Yeah, like, like, I just he was being stealthy, and then it's yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, big good movie. Yeah. But like, I just like I was shocked because, like I'm saying, I walked into this dreading it. Like, talking about, like, as far as like beating expectations, this is like this is the biggest glow up a movie's probably ever gotten for me from like walking into it to leaving it. So it's an yeah, eight. How is I this really... office drama more exciting than a movie that takes place in a water apocalypse? I don't know, but God bless them, they did it. <laughs> like if this, you know what, replace Dennis Leary. With fucking Dennis Hopper, and who knows what this movie would have done? Oh, hell yeah, um, d- d- Alec. Oh, um, 
like a six. Oh, like it's it's fine, and like I think listening to you guys talk about it made me a little less hateful, but I still didn't like it. Like it's all right. Interesting. Um, Surprising. Like Moneyball is a better version of this movie, and I find it more compelling. It's better actors. It's better actors across the board. The story is true. Like that, the the story that Moneyball follows in the course of that one season, I think some of the like timelines are skewed, but it follows the athletics from that exact season when a lot of that shit actually happened. Yeah. Um, and it just so portrays s- them as a poverty franchise. Like it is not like glossed over the days or like trash. So like, I've never seen that. He, so that might have colored it different for me. Sure, you would, if you like this, yeah. you would fucking get a, a raging mega hard boner. Well, I should watch Moneyball. I should watch Moneyball. As close as he can get to one. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but like, it's like a all the, stu- all the stuff that's interesting in this <laughs> is better in Moneyball. And I found it hard to, very hard to separate that. Like, yeah, like Sean said, in Moneyball, like, he literally trades, like, a third string, third baseman to For somebody so, so they will pay to have his soda machine filled for the season <laughs> because they signed David justice and he can't believe that they have to pay for their sodas in the locker room. Yeah, that's right. Like, so, so this is like the wish.com money ball is what you're saying. This yeah. Is just like, and I mean, it's, a, it's, sh- it's like, technically it's good. It's shot. Well, I just don't care about the story. Like, I don't know what year money ball came out, but it couldn't have been that long before this. Cause this came out, out in 14. Uh, Moneyball so, came out in like ten or eleven. Off topic, David Justice, one 11. of the greatest names in baseball ever. Oh David yeah, Justice, he should be in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. That's such a great name, <laughs> David Justice. So Moneyball came out in eleven, and this came out in fourteen. Oh shit! Like, I think Sean just said eleven. Yeah, yeah it's I 11. think I believe it came out September twentieth or twenty first because it was like right before my birthday. But like, this movie's not bad. I just didn't find it like. The first three quarters of it, I didn't find compelling until the actual draft started. He had to like start. Like I didn't care about them like trying to dig up dirt about whatever. Like I was, it's, I was bored to tears with it when the actual draft started. And they're like, then he's trying to wheel and deal and make his moves. That it picked up a little bit, but still not not enough to overcome the beginning of it. Um. Uh, Sean or no. Yeah, I'll Ooh, take I, it. Uh, God God went first. Shot. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm gonna like pull this out and give it a nine. Holy like fuck! Moneyball is like a perfect movie. Like Moneyball is one of my favorite favorite movies. So it's like not even in the same conversation really, other than the basic structure. But I feel like the the stuff that this movie does right. Like I love a bottle movie, one that takes especially one that takes place over the course of a day, and like. Yeah. I know it's a cheap way to do it to throw the four hours remaining up there, but it really propels the movie in a way that like this could wander over the course of like four or five days and be kind of boring. Like it's very compressed, which I appreciate. I was like gobsmacked at how good Kevin Costner is in this role. And it's not like the most dynamic role ever, but like it suits him really well. If that makes sense. Like, uh, I hate Dennis Leary, but like because he's supposed to be a hateable character, it worked really well for me. And I just fucking love sports movies. And I love like like I'm one of those guys that used to get the baseball prospectus every year, that fucking Bible sized thing that has every sabermetric stat in the world. And so I love that shit. Like all the video games, I trade every good player I have and hoard draft picks like I'm the Oklahoma City Thunder. So the team's like good five years down the road, but the payroll is only like eight million dollars. (laughs) <laughs> like I, I like I own MLB front office uh, manager for 360, and I have all those like uh, football manager computer yeah, games oh, yeah. and all you know all that <laughs> shit. So like, I spend more time doing the GM shit in like Madden and 2K than I do actually playing the game. Like I love that shit. Do you just so, like, like sim sim the seasons? Yeah. To get to the yeah. off season. Exactly. Yeah. Like I fucking like. 
and this isn't like great art or anything, but compared to the other bullshit we've watched for this month, like, oh, this is like a whole movie for grownups and like, you know, it makes yeah. sense. And yeah, yeah, like, I, I, feel that, do, I feel that really big. Yeah, like it felt like yeah. an actual movie. I, I don't think this is like a nine, like independent to this show. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't no. be like beating down the door to fucking like tell you about draft day. But that my expectations were so low, like Gog's like walking into my own execution, and then you find out <laughs> like not only is the power not on, but they've suspended capital punishment like <laughs> overnight. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like if you had asked me before this month started, which one out of Waterworld and fucking what was the other Robin one? Hood, Robin Hood, Robin Hood, and Draft Day. Which is the one you're gonna like? There's no way in hell I picked Draft Day. No, I would have thought yeah. Draft Day had been the most boring one. Like I love the intern where he's like, "Oh, Johnny, shit for brains over here." Like it's, it's a lot of like cheap throwaway stuff, and like I don't like that Jennifer Garner says TD because that seems like something that somebody would write that never actually talks about sports. Because have you ever in your life said TD unless Waterhouse was after it? <laughs> right. Like, no. But no, I I really enjoyed it, and I was not bored. I I was like I was getting ready to like do schoolwork while I was watching the movie, and I actually just sat and watched the movie, which is a rarity for the show lately. So I'm going to give it a nine nice. on a curve compared to the rest of the movies we watch. Mm. TJ, uh, it's an eight for me, dog. I I think this movie is a great mixture of like. Very, I I liked all of the fucking the procedural crap, and then it's mixed with like just weird decisions that just kept me interested. Like I don't know, going to the water park and having lines like "people pay to get wet," <laughs> and <laughs> having Kevin Costner say, "I've been stepping on my dick all day," <laughs> and having Kevin Costner bang Jennifer Garner, and no one seems to really be that upset about it because he's like 30 years older than her or whatever uh having that scene again where uh kevin costner's mother who again looks closer in age to him than than anyone in the film uh she's just standing outside of his office which again is the practice field at like the 30 yard line for no reason and then they cut to her and like the sun is setting and it's like what the fuck is this well, there's also the choice to label every room that they're in on the inside of the room to let you know what room you're in, which is, <laughs> yeah, yeah. from a building design standpoint, is mind-boggling, but okay, there's, cool. There's so many, like, like it, it's it's funny well, it's to me, not, too. It's like, not as uh, realistic as the real Cleveland interior offices, that one year everybody got staff and they kept accidentally playing pornography on the big screens. Oh, yeah, that's right. Good good time. See, this is yeah. why the real NFL needs to be a movie, <laughs> but... Uh, I, I don't know. This movie is like oddly compelling. That's the best way I can describe it. It is just very oddly compelling. Like I was never bored in this movie. Like it's so weird. And like, like Gogs talked about earlier when Franklin Jello like teleports from New York <laughs> to Cleveland in like an hour, it's like, wait, what? Like, there's so, like so the Franklin Jello yeah, that's looks such an like easy right around because they could have just been like, oh, we're posted up in a hotel in Manhattan during the yeah. draft. And Frank Langella, who's dressed up like he's about to summon La Magra the whole time, like it's like, what the fuck is this movie? He's wearing the fucking sh- the fucking uh, shadow run sunglasses and, and everywhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you get fucking all the weird NFL people. You get fucking Ray Lewis shows up. You get fucking Chris Berman and uh, Chris Eisen, uh, or yeah, I said Rich Eisen. One of those Rich, Rich Eisen. Eisen. Yeah, Rich Eisen. Uh, you get all the NFL people to show up and like, it's just such a weird ass movie. The movie ends with just like, Hey, you know, football, here's football players. <laughs> Why did it end with, are you ready for some football? Because that would have been, it's so even... fucking weird. Like the movie shouldn't exist. I think that's where I'm going to land on it. It's just the strangest film. And like, it's something that will be lost to time because again, like aside from our show, no one is seeking out this fucking movie. No, like, no, not chance. No one. Like, there's like, did, Gogs, did you you looked up the budget, right? Twenty five yeah, million. Twenty five million. What's the? And it made twenty six. Oof. <laughs> well, it's also like I can't believe I like a movie that's basically agit prop for the NFL. Like, it's like a big football commercial. 
Oh, it totally is. Yeah. 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 It, it's like the weirdest fucking movie, but like, I cannot, I did not hate it. I was like, again, I, I, I've been detached from all of the movies this month. And this, this movie Just, kept my interest, you know, like yeah. I, I, I liked it. I, I, it's something I'll never watch again, but like, I didn't know it, it. it would be less special if you went back to it. It's just yeah, a I weird, think, like, I, I think part of the reason I liked it so much, it was so shocking that I was interested in it. What's you know that, what I mean? Uh, I, one of God's own high powered prototype mutants too weird to yeah. live and too rare to die. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I don't know. Not a bad movie. Shocking. Shocking Johnson, buddy. I don't, I don't even know. Uh, anyway, so next month is Final December <laughs> Nation. December Nation. Final December Nation. Oh my god. Oh well, Gogs, it's your month. I guess you get the first pick. Which of the Final Destination movies are we two. watching? We're watching two. Okay. How many are there? Five. Six? Oh. When are we doing the Moleys? Are we going to do that in January or December? We can, can keep we up a January, Final Destination. I still got a oh. fucking... Or like the end of December, because I still got to watch like movies do it the last from this week year. Of December. Yeah. Okay. I'll burn up my pick. We'll just do that for the Mollies last week. Okay. I don't really give um, a shit which Final Destination movies we watch. <laughs> and tonight is episode 298. So two Holy more weeks shit. is episode 300. Oh my god. god. But I don't think The Matrix will be out yet. I'm excited for that. Yeah. Agreed. Wait, when's that coming? Three. That comes at Christmas week, right? Something like that. Is it going to be good? I no, so. but I'm I'm still want to go watch it. Like I'm still excited. Well, you are you are a, a a diehard Wachowski fan. Like oh I yeah, think I'm that, a simp for the Wachowskis. Like I love real, Speed Racer. Like I know you I, like, do. I legitimately yeah. love that movie. You love Jupiter Rising or whatever. What does it? That's not again the movie name, ascending. Again, ascending. I recognize that it is not. A, <laughs> I love it in the same way I love Venom. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, uh, fair. <laughs> I even like I enjoy Cloud Atlas because it's a big wrong headed mistake movie. <laughs> yeah, that's you speak that, that is. good true true. Like no, it's fucking <laughs> awful, but like I love it because it's like, well, at least it's something. They're trying. I agree. I agree <laughs> with that. All right, everybody. So final December nation. Uh December nation. De- oh, December. <laughs> So next week we'll be watching Final Destination Two. I think that's the movie with the log. Did, am I going to be lost in the lore? No, because yeah. I've never seen Final Destination One either. <laughs> okay, cool. So you might be, but you'll both be lost in the lore. Okay. We'll be just as lost. I, this as is the only somebody's not better than me. That's I don't care if I understand seen, I've anything. I've never seen just, any yeah. of them. So yeah, I, I I've never seen a, a single one. I've seen a lot of the commercials. I remember the trailers. Oh, One yeah. of them, like a NASCAR, goes off the rails and kills a bunch of people. That, I think NASCAR. that might be the whole, yeah, a NASCAR. Uh, <laughs> anyway, all right, everybody, all right. eat your own ass. Bonk- Go Ravens. Bonk- Mac, no matter what, I'm getting in no matter what. That. I want that on my no tombstone if I die before everybody else does. Yeah, you're the healthiest one, so I think you're you're going to be all right. Yeah, yeah but probably I'm safe. probably the most prone to suicide, so it's a oh. coin toss. Oh, no, it's fine. It. Yeah, but anyway. it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. If the first half of the movie isn't good, it's probably not going to get better at the end, unless it's the mist. <laughs> yeah, you never know. You might be in the mist. Uh, <laughs> right. Also, that movie ends in suicide too. Uh, yeah. All right, everybody. Bye bye. Child Later. Bye.